It's Michael Tidwell, Chris Kleeschult, and Michael Tidwell. <laughs> block time. <laughs> it's block time. This is Michael Tidwell. <laughs> this is Michael Tidwell. And this is Chris Kleeschult. <laughs> so, so like I said... Um, well, there goes your tip, Mike in space. <laughs> yeah. So, like I said... What, how do you know that was Mike in space? Oh, who was? Yeah, cool. Oh, it was you? No. Uh, it was Mike that, in space. <laughs> no, I had an anonymous person yeah. submit uh-huh. a new uh-huh. you know, intro video, and I said, the last person who submits an intro video, I'm using it. <laughs> now, that might have been Mike in space. <laughs> it might have been someone else, but that person did wish to <laughs> that remain open? anonymous. Is it still an funny. open invitation for next time? Yeah, so if anyone sends me... Oh, that's what uh, you're gonna uh, play. Uh, no, if anyone sends me an intro video, I'll play it. If it, unless it's like super inappropriate, <laughs> dude, don't. Yeah, <laughs> don't no, no, no. Like, that's promise. Like, yeah, that's my only exception. If it's super inappropriate, I'm probably remember who we're dealing with. Well, well, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, at least make it PG-13. Like, you know, don't make it like triple X. So, know, for our massive listening audience, I am in fact Michael B. Casey, <laughs> and I am Michael Casey, the the more famous one. You're the one for the Wall Street Journal. That's yes. you. You're an Australian redhead. So both of you guys <laughs> have the B as a, the emit, your initial, your middle no, name. No, I don't think so. What's yours? What's your middle initial? Dude, come on. I don't want to. Are you Michael? What's B- your social security T- number? T- Su- <laughs> super, super uh, private information. Let's let's get right to it. <laughs> All right. Um, we we we've been having some fun. Uh, listen, uh, watching some videos. Uh, one was like a spam. Who was that? Gary. Busey or something or what Gary was it? Busey? No, no. no. Who who was in the spam jar when they, oh, when they were like that was uh, Steve that was a Steve Buscemi. Yeah, Steve Buscemi. Okay, Steve yeah. Buscemi, I, yeah. We, a couple weird videos and then that if video, yeah, the if video, which was, was cool. kind of like weird, inspirational. I don't really even know. Like to it your was point, a poem. It was a yeah. The, it was the, Rudyard Kipling. It was uh, the if uh, poem that he has. Ah, uh, well, his poem. That's already like a famous poem. Yeah, yeah. And they just put poem. the video in the background. Yeah. Ah, well, I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought I thought someone was blockchain inspired just then. I was. I, I was. I was feeling it. <laughs> I saw Andreas's <laughs> clip there, and I was like, "Yeah." Oh, you're Andreas fanboy. I am. I'm very. Ah. I'm a big fan of that guy. Dude, there's only there's I, only like three guys in the space I get fanboy over. Andreas is one. Uh, Gavin Andreessen, and, and then uh, the third would be Eric Voorhees. Everyone like, hates you right now. Yeah, well, whatever. Every everyone <laughs> from the, I'll just say the UASF vortex. I'm sure they do, base, but I mean that goes without uh, saying. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, you lost all credibility just then. I, don't I, give I a would, shit. I would like to say, Andanatatanaapalis block time guy, yeah. um, the guy who who made our uh, intro. You know, spent a lot of time saying block time. You know, yeah, over and over again. Yeah. He he's, does that live every week. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> no, but he's he's why probably I'm in Bitcoin originally. Oh or, yeah, you know, I mean I no, watched a talks, couple of his videos. I was like, yeah, his this talks guy makes are a lot no of sense. joke. Yeah, I mean you know, I was around before he started speaking. I actually, when um, did he? 2012. When did he get in? Oh well, I mean he started getting he started getting big on the speech circuit. If I remember correctly, he started actually publicly speaking about it in like 2013, early 2013. But yeah. Oh, yeah, that I remember, remember that too. Yeah, he's on yeah. Let's Talk Bitcoin. And he was, you know, with Stephanie Murphy and, ironically, uh, Adam B. Levine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought you guys Another used B. a middle initial because no, it's oh, yeah. like literally my middle initial. <laughs> Yeah. I know I, why Adam Levine uses Adam B. Levine because there's another guy, Adam Levine, who's the lead singer of Maroon Five, and he doesn't well, want to get confused with that. There's guy. there's another Mike Casey. There's a Michael Casey that's in Bitcoin. He writes for the Wall Street Journal. He wrote. But, oh, I, I thought he was just a financial. No, writer. he he wrote a book called The Age of Cryptocurrency. <laughs> oh, okay. So, like, I kind of in public, I have to differentiate myself. I actually, I may. Uh, on my uh, um, medium page, I say no relation to Michael J. Casey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, so I had. Uh, so, so if anyone doesn't know, for our live audience, we have two viewers right now. We're we're losing them by the second. We started out with three. So we lost a bot. No, well, How does you, that even well, happen? No, no. Yeah. Here's a point. <laughs> well, it's like I'm out. Fuck four. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Mike and Space joined, and it says he has two. Messages retracted. I didn't even know you could retract messages on the live chat. 
Oh, he was he was telling. I, I, I didn't even read him. I don't even know what he said. But anyways, but seriously though, thank you, Mike and Space, for the intro. It's, I don't even like, know if he's listening right now. Well, well, yeah. uh, <laughs> well maybe people will uh, listen later because you can watch these later, right? Of course. After they're edited, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you're willing to pay the the subscription fee, we we have a pretty steep. Uh, we should totally do quality that. <laughs> subscription fee. All right, all right. Let's let's talk shop now. All right. Enough of the f- the silly stuff. Um, so I so I'm I'm a big skeptic on uh, legitimate use cases for Ethereum smart contracts or or, or smart contracts in general that outside of like maybe like some kind of multi sig. Um, I was I had the idea. Oh, this would be a great use case for Ethereum. Um, if if anyone does ransomware, you could if you did ransomware through Ethereum, you could ensure that if I pay whatever the ransom is, I am insured to get that key to decrypt my my files or whatever. Like it somehow it's guaranteed. I don't know. Like if a that's, smart contract yeah. ransomware decryption thing. Yeah, because I was thinking. I work. would I wouldn't ever want to pay ransomware unless I was sure I wasn't going to get you know if I if unless I was sure I was going to be able to get my files decrypted and I feel like that's a that's if if someone's going to be a hacker they could be like a legitimate hacker at least and 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 give those guarantees and it would be open source code so you could audit and make sure that you know you would get the private key or whatever yep is that now, first off, I asked I asked this question to uh, a couple of different like chat groups, and one of them was Tab Group, and um, I started stomping yeah. all over you. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, as you should. I mean, this, well, we're all we're all learning here, but well, no, I'm not not saying it's 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 infeasible completely, but I mean, the big the big thing is uh, they those programs in and of themselves they do allow you to decrypt a couple of files as samples. That doesn't. I mean, it doesn't do anything for you as far as it confidence. It doesn't. I mean, because if like throughout their program or whatever, if they decrypt a couple files for you to prove that they have the key, all that does is prove that they have the not key. Not that they're going. Not to that they're going to release the operation. it. Yeah, exactly. And um, although that's better than nothing, probably it. Um, I I want like the the guarantee that everything's going to be decrypted. Everything's you know going to be available. Well, our Ethereum buddy did say that he said it was possible to do that with a smart contract. He figured out a way to do that, uh, but I don't, he didn't elaborate. Okay, well, yeah. the, I, I, I'm makes me wonder if that's going to happen on Ethereum. If, if you know, that's interesting. But another thing that uh, I forget the person who did it. It was in the dojo. He posted that hey, this is possible with Bitcoin, All right? And I was like, oh, really? And he gave me. Uh, I'm gonna open. Up oh, the that link. was the link. That um, was when you sent. Yeah, I did. I, I I didn't Google it. He did. But but essentially, Greg Maxwell says the first successful zero knowledge contingent payment. And um, I I quoted him in there saying like, uh, let's see. So the problem with using this. Approach- Imagine. Oh, wait, hold on. Imagine a movie style brief cape brief. Oh, briefcase. briefcase swap. One party with a briefcase full of cash, another containing secret documents, but without the potential scenario of one of the cases being filled with shredded newspaper and the result in the resulting exciting chasing. So essentially, this is like, hey, you have some information, which could be a private key and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. But the way that his schema works, if you go down the bottom. Uh, How far? Uh, I'm trying to see where it was. Uh yeah. Wow, this was pretty. I skimmed over it pretty quick. <laughs> There's a lot there. I don't know. Yeah, I, I read it quick. Uh, let's see. So, uh, oh, the effect go. of the payment. The seller. So, the. Uh, but he says somewhere in here that the, the buyer actually uh, writes the code in order to verify the proof. In a ransomware scenario, I don't see that happening. Uh, no, they would have to <laughs> use a service that the yeah. attacker. So, what they could do is. The service, the attacker would set up a maybe a Tor node or something, and then they would go and they would get the transaction already pre-made for them that they would just have to sign with a private key that can unlock funds. Yeah, and all and you have to do is demonstrate so, so demonstrate that um, that they can't that using this you know a, a zk proof zero knowledge proof a snark. 
demonstrate that that thing that's encapsulated in that transaction that's going to be transmitted to them can in fact decrypt some set of the data. What's the difference between a snark and a zero knowledge proof? Well, a snark is a type. Oh, so it would be using proof. snark. Well, Z yeah. No, I mean, as, you're are you talking about snarks? The uh, the SRI kind of stuff, the standard yeah. research. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like like, you know, like zk snarks, like in Zcash. No, in zero knowledge proofs. Okay. Yeah, that's it's along the same lines of having uh, a non Turing complete type of situation where you can give people a witness of the script and you don't necessarily have to have the script. So zero knowledge in this case, because it's not just a range proof because that's not what you want. So let me, let me back up for people. So a range proof is when you have <coughs> one case that you're proving. So say you want to say I gave money to a charity, but you don't want to disclose which charity you gave uh, money to. So a range proof is a, uh, you know, uh, it's on this list of charities, the one that I gave to, and I can prove that to you that it is one of these ones, but I'm not going to tell you if it was the NRA, the EFF or abortions are us. I'm not going to tell you which one I gave to, you know, but it was one of these. So you guess what? It's tax deductible. So uh, right. that's a range proof, which is one of the things you can do with zero knowledge proofs. Uh, but this is a different type. Yeah, this is not that. Yeah. So, so have you ever heard of anything like this? Yeah, yeah. Being done, like what I described. Um, uh, no, I have not heard of anything being done yet. Okay, but it's definitely possible Would, and now, with Ethereum and with the and with Bitcoin. No, well, I mean, I haven't I haven't heard much of an example of these not working when people actually pay. Is <laughs> no, no, that's, no, that's a big deal. Uh, are you saying that you've you've heard that? In all cases, people are getting their files unlocked. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't heard anybody. You know, I haven't heard reports of I paid and it didn't unlock. Anyway. Oh, I've heard many reports. Oh, really? In fact, okay. A lot of um, so there's white hat hackers. So they're actually um, saying that you know we are actively putting out this ransomware and not paying on purpose because if everybody says, well, I'm not paying because I'm not going to get my files back anyway, that's a solution to this problem. That's true. So, you know, that's... See, yeah, like... The, uh, <laughs> see, I'm trying to help the hackers here. Guys, we have to... No, I'm just kidding. You're trying to help the I hackers? I am not officiated no, that would be with a good idea. Just use, kidding. Use Ethereum to to give people uh, confidence that they're going to get their files back. Well... With a smart contract, what, you would, can... Would you say that maybe Ethereum's better suited for this yes, than Bitcoin? Yes, totally, yeah. I would... So, yeah. but I mean, if Ethereum, if that's the case... See, because this, this gets sticky to me, right? So if you're talking about now you have a, a smart contract that's executing on the Ethereum blockchain that literally violates the law, literally violates the law, it, sure. the, the contract itself but, is complicit in a crime. <laughs> so what does that do? You, <laughs> what are the implications you, you of mean, that? You mean like it's public versus um, any any money transfer could be breaking the law or not breaking the law, but this is definitely breaking the law? Well, yeah, this law. is definitely designed to break the law. I mean, yeah. there's no if ands, or buts about it. If this contract executes what it does, you know, because obviously, well, I mean, <coughs> it's it's debatable because you had to have the key to encrypt it anyway, right? So I, I'm, I'm just trying to think through the implications of if something like this happens, is it going to cause any social upheaval and backslash from the powers that be because this is now a thing? I don't think any more than people buying drugs with Bitcoin or buying whatever else is illegal with Bitcoin, right? Those transactions are illegal, right? If right, I but they're you, not they're not money, coded to be. So it's one thing if like you have a platform, right? And that platform is okay, so like say I make this table. Well, this table, you can do lots of things with this table, and all of them, most of them are fine. But if you use the table to bludgeon somebody to death, I mean that's you know it, I don't know. Probably means you're like the mountain. <laughs> if you're if you're picking up this table, hitting people with it. So well, like you know, if, if Ethereum was only used for these kinds of things, and I could see I could see that being the case but right uh, well you know what i mean it's just that, it's right? I, I mean to me it screams like the senators up in arms and oh, they're I gonna mean, be I up in arms you know, anyway over i don't know how far they'll get with that but i mean that's i mean and not not to say that oh we shouldn't do this because if you can do it it's gonna get done but you know that this is the nature of it right so uh but i'm just trying to think through the implications chris I tend I tend to over overestimate those because I thought I thought we would see like regulation over the Dow hack, and we might have if they hadn't reversed it. Like, you know, 
Yeah, I don't. I, I was surprised that people didn't, you know, jump in there and say, "Hey, you know, this is, you know, this is overstepping." I thought, I thought this to was going to be like the end of the the golden days when nobody messed with. Us, you know? Yeah. But apparently, it's just been rolling right along. Apparently, the right people weren't affected by that. Exactly, I think that's what the deal is. Yeah, yeah. No, nobody, nobody with any power lost any money. <laughs> I am glad that we didn't talk about. We started in with Ethereum. That's because we said we we're gonna get away from Bitcoin related stuff. Yeah, well, we we've been oh. talking about Bitcoin. A we can't, lot. we can't, we can't stray too far from it. There's too many. Well, things hold going on though. Let's let's yeah. talk about Ethereum a little bit. So we hit. The peak of 400 a couple weeks back, right? 450. 450? Was it up to 450 at one point? Yeah. For like know. a little bit. Oh, what you, what's how, many, how many bit cents are we right now? I don't know. Uh, I think 12 last to look. Uh, let me look. 12 bit cents? Yeah. Yep. And it, it hovered a little <laughs> under 15, I think, is what it was at its peak that I saw. Of course, I was offline for a little bit, so I don't know. So right now we're sitting at three twenty-five dollars and twelve point one bit cents. Yeah. So the pattern I'm noticing four four twenty ish on G Dex. So did the GX flash crash that that have be uh, the some flash sobering, crash so that have some sobering effects on the overall price. I mean, Even though that's just one exchange, right? Well, it came, you know, like any true flash crash. I don't think it had really any effect on the larger trend. But some people lost a shit ton of money. And other like, people they got had a orders really good buy. Did they have orders in the order book and that kind of thing? or Well, as long as they don't reverse them. Because remember, there, there was a case with, with one previous fat finger on the Gemini exchange. I know they actually reversed it. And which one was this on? Was this on Kraken or GDAX? Or, do you know where it happened? The flash this, is on G -Dex. this is on you GDAX. You're talking about the Coin? most recent? Yeah. The, so the, the most recent I heard was stop order losses were self-triggering each other all the way well, down. Well, right, right. But I mean, at one point in time before, yeah. trades were reversed. And uh, I, I, I think I, I know that happened like on Gemini, but I think it also happened on Coinbase another time. They reversed trades because that, it was I fat finger. That might have happened with Bitcoin because I remember with Bitcoin on uh, GDAX, it, it dropped down to like zero for like a second. Yeah, well, it's, it's everything does. But this is know, Ethereum's but, first one. Flash crashes happen. But you know what? No one really covered that. What? Bitcoin going down to zero for that one like second and then shooting back up. Yeah, I don't think it went all the way down to zero, but it went low. It went really low, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, flash crashes do happen, and and I remember in that case when it does. I mean, it depends on what you mean by covering it, because I remember reading about it a lot, and a lot of people were super pissed because they rolled it back. They rolled back all yeah, those trades. Yeah, yeah, you know? they, yeah. <laughs> people were pissed, and rightly so, because you could have made a killing yeah. if you had an order in. Yeah, know? I mean that's the that's the point. <laughs> that's why you yeah, that's trades. why you put stuff on exchange at ultra low weight. You just if it hits it, you're like, oh shit, I just got some yeah. fifteen dollar coins. I mean, if that's you. Like, <clears throat> I mean, you're doing the community a great service by loading up the order book. Oh, and yeah, because that keeps to, it from... <laughs> yeah, and for them to roll that back, you're like, dude, I I did the, my end of the bargain. That means somebody powerful lost some money. That's yeah. what it means. So, yeah, I would be pissed, too. Yeah, I, I, whenever, I'd be pissed. Trades what, should be final. Big boy pants. Yeah. That's that's one thing I say about Bitcoin. When you're, when you're dealing with Bitcoin, you're dealing with cryptocurrency, you have to wear your big boy pants. And yeah, if you, you take if the you risk. If you crap yourself, you got to live with that. You know? Yeah. But yeah, so people so, are t people have lots of money on the exchanges. They're taking that risk, and then they're taking another risk by loading up the public order books. You know, they should get rewarded for that. They shouldn't have mulligans. They oh, that we didn't mean that's that. true. Yeah. And if you're leaving, you know, it's it's doubly risky leaving. Um, well, in this case, it would be cash if you got a buy order in. But the same thing could go the other way. Somebody could fat finger a sell order, and you could have something astronomically high and just keep moving it up. And somebody fat fingers a. You know, a ma or a massive uh, buy order, and just so it hits, you know, say five hundred million dollars, you know, some billionaire or something, and just hits the buy. <laughs> you know, that could happen. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! I meant to do a market order. It's like, yeah. I'll be sell. <laughs> oh, sell shit, all my shit. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> or you mean like not a market order? Well, yeah. yeah. I always get those two confused: market and limit order. It's yeah. The one, the one that's it's not at the current time. <laughs> you yeah. know, the the one that you wait for. Yeah. Um. So speaking of Ethereum, um, all these ICOs that have been coming out recently, I've been pretty much stalling the network. Have you all been? Oh up, yeah, up on it's that? been yeah. ridiculous lately. <laughs> it stalled and, Ethereum flat out for almost a day. And there's a lot of like uh, Bitcoiners, similar to us, but you know, I would say even more hardcore. 
are like, you know what? They told you so. Blocks. <laughs> told you so. Like <laughs> you, you have scaling issues just like us. You know, told you so. And like, there's a bunch of I told I told you so's on Twitter. Well, and anybody and stuff. that's serious studies both of these things like they should. They can tell that Ethereum is going to have all the problems of Bitcoin <laughs> times a hundred or a thousand, maybe. So, you know, it's like it's. A lot of people buy into Ethereum not even understanding what they're buying into. Well, let, let's be fair, though. I mean, because if, if, if they do switch over to sharded proof of stake like their plan is, I mean, not saying they can pull that off. But if they do, it does alleviate a lot of the scaling issues that, that Bitcoin faces. You know, right. It's but a different that, ball game at that point. You but, know, you know. but at that point, it's definitely a... But yeah, if things stay as they are, definitely. It's definitely not a blockchain in the generic sense of... Like what I know as a blockchain, it's definitely like we're going to have, to have like there's these kind of blockchains, you know, like almost like different types of databases. There's these type of databases. There's these type so, of key value store. There's I attribute know. it to the whole like AWS type of infrastructure where they're like this is global. You can, but it turns out that your servers on your servers in Northern Virginia. It's in Northern Virginia, dude. If that goes down, you're going down. It doesn't matter how big or how sophisticated the rest of the AWS network is, right? So. You know, having doing sharding is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing, and I think it's a net negative. I overall. think it's a net positive for Ethereum. I, I, I think, think it's a net positive for Ethereum, and you're right. You could have data loss without catastrophic, you know, total failure, which is not the case I, with Bitcoin. I think I think for but, where Ethereum wants to go, and like their vision with it, they don't really care too much about, in my opinion, decentralization. That's just my opinion. Yeah, like the decentralization factor of Ethereum is, in my opinion, going to be more audibility and I don't know appealing it, to it's uh, it's going to be appealing to the masses. It's going to be more decentralized than straight up, you know. Well, there's, there's centralized services, it's, but it's not it's really. It's good it's that we have be, a plurality of systems here, is what I, I think. You know, because it's good to have one that is, is focuses on extreme, uh, you know, uptime availability and decentralization to the max and it's also good to have one that you know is sharded and cheaper but is potentially more lossy you know what i mean but you know odds are <laughs> well it's not even going to be lossy because i, I well, bet you people are going to start holding their own you know holding what's important to them on the blockchain well and, yeah exactly like you could yeah that's it's an interesting thought uh, choose your own shard or well, you know what well, i mean, I mean it's, it's going to be to the point where it's not even a blockchain to the gen, to the sense of what a blockchain is like right now right it's going to be like something way different it's yeah this is going to evolve it's going to be like it, you have Ethereum and then you have blockchains. Like Ethereum is going to be like its own thing. Like I like I think when Ethereum's done, it's going to have a uh, master agent set up. It's going to have it's going to have uh, centralizing features of where it's hosted around the world, and it's just going to be like a different. It's just going to be the Ethereum it's network. I think it's going to be a bit. cartel of federated, <clears throat> you know, sharding supercomputers kind of thing. Because that's the conspiracy Whoa. that me and uh, Michael B. Casey here love is is the whole. Wait, y'all like conspiracies more than me? Well, no, just no. We, we love the conspiracy <laughs> of removing to removing what we have now and replacing it. What we what with removing what we have as decentralization and putting the banking cartel back, right back in place. I don't think it's about banking with Ethereum, you know, honestly. Because what I think with Ethereum, it's about money. Of course, oh, it's always about yeah, money. Yeah, but I mean, see, here's the thing, though, is it's with because it's Ethereum bypasses all that crap because they want to move to pr straight up proof of stake. My problem with proof of stake is it's inherently centralizing with very little friction. But does that? <laughs> but uh, let me ask you a question: Does it matter that it's in, like? Because my opinion, Ethereum succeeds more when it's centralized. It's not going to be like there's no real Ooh, need to have it. Hold on, centralizing of what? So, see, remember consensus. ownership of ether. Exactly, that's the thing. Con you know, ownership of ether, and it only matters. So, because so it's I start. Stake. So I start saying. So when I'm saying like centralization versus distributed, mm -hmm. like that, like it'll definitely be distributed. Yeah, it, but it, distributed it, doesn't mean anything. So, so yeah, everything's it, distributed. Well, so so like you, you, people talk about. Well, we that, talk about like, centralization now. We have to be very careful because there's a couple <laughs> of different aspects on Bitcoin. They're all one and the same, right? Um, you know the the more or the more distributed your mining is or nodes or whatever. But on Ethereum, when it switches over to proof of stake, you can have it decentralized on hundreds of trillions of computers around the world. But one guy owns it. 
You know, you could totally have yeah, that. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and if he's smart, he'll never tell you that he owns all of it. But yeah, I mean, but yeah. when we t- I hate the word distributed because here's what distributed is from from Q- so Mike and I, you know, we we're like I'm like what's that guy's name that was in that movie and you go oh Ricardo Montalban right <laughs> that's just being distributed right because I, I don't know something but you do we're distributing our knowledge and he may do the same thing for me and say that's distributed that's not decentralization decentralization is. I know it's Ricardo Montalban. So, 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 so do you. So do you. So do you. It's like you know, and it's like you know, if someone get if you get kidnapped next week, we still know about Ricardo Montalban. So, like, I I just want to like wait a minute. You're saying that's an example of centralization or decentralization? decentralization. Okay. So he's saying the that's so distributed versus decentralized. Right, hold on, using that same example, what's centralization? Centralization is where I just know everything. Where I know you everything. Just come to me and I'll just tell you the answer. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, well, I guess that, that analogy works for me. So, sure. I mean, so we talk about decentralization. Um, you're right that Ethereum is moving away from that, and they and they don't really, they're not, they're non-apologetic about that. And I well, don't think it serves them to be, you know, pure in the in the sense that they want to remain decentralized because, right. it's good because to have the, a parties that, the parties that, um, the stakeholders really don't know uh, the roots of Bitcoin and how libertarian it was and all that this is a new thing for them so you know for them well, to for them to hold you know tight to that i don't know well, so so i mean there's trade-offs because if you're talking about holding information if you have the ability to shard and you have enough redundant your your x number you've done my risk tolerance assessment and you say if i have x number of distributed nodes with this redundant replicate information uh, you know geographically distributed and you know politically distributed and whatever and you know if i have x number well i don't need any more than x number and the next number could be you know 50 could be 100 could be 500 it all depends on the trade off the slider that you want to do right um but what it saves you is it saves you from having to have everything on every node forever <laughs> You know, right. Yeah. That's because that's what that's what we're looking at with Bitcoin. I mean, you know, you get a little bit of pruning. Which but which which would <laughs> I mean, well, speaking about the Go pruning, ahead. what do you what do you think will be future pruning of oh, Bitcoin? Without a or doubt, back to Bitcoin. No, without a doubt. <laughs> well, for just for a second. No, th- well, I I think without a doubt we are going to hard fork our way out of a lot of this uh, old pr- you know non pruned blockchain stuff, right? I mean, we've talked about this a lot. We're like, why don't we just Hard fork to work because we're gonna have to hard fork for a lot of these, uh, you know, cron- uh, quantum proof, yeah, uh, type of encryption, you know, type well, once, of uh, once hard forks elliptic, are on the curve table. stuff, right? So, I mean, we're gonna have to hard fork away from some of this cryptography that we currently have, and when we do, all right, well, everybody's got to move their corns, coins necessarily, <laughs> their corns too, they have to move all of their stuff anyway, so. All we have UT- a Bitcoiner here. It's it's a student gonna, of Professor Bitcoin. Yeah. So <laughs> the UTXO set gets really uh, really lean when that happens, right? Right. Well, well, we'll forget the UTXO set. What about this whole idea of hey, uh, we can't, we don't really need all the nodes to hold the last, you know, two hundred thousand blocks. I don't know what. Like, what's your what's your idea of like pruning? I guess not needing certain parts of the blocks or whatever or well, trimming that down but yeah you can like for example right now you can prune out a lot of the signatures of you can prune out entire blocks that just you're like oh there's no utxos in here just you know and you can still you can still you still have all you can run through the entire uh, blockchain and get rid of mostly everything and you can still be a fully validating uh node you can still validate new transactions that come in you can still because you still have the UTXO. So you know how like Ethereum is raising um, their their blockchain size is rising much quicker than yeah, Bitcoin. Yeah, it's got a lot more it, on and it. it. And a lot of stuff is happening. Are they going to pretty much be doing the same thing where they're like, oh, even though our blockchain, like, you know, let's say years from now or whatever, is like a terabyte, uh, you only really need like 10 gigs of it or something. Or, or do you ever think it'll get to that point? Or um, You know, I don't I don't know. I'm trying to think. What did they, on their roadmap? Cause they, so they have Casper to handle the proof of stake stuff right yeah they got the whole sharding thing to handle um not having to run every smart contract on every node right but i don't remember in their roadmap uh what they're gonna do for their bloat i think sharding is a partial to that too 
Um, yeah, it's going to help some of that. Sharded but, storage, as but it doesn't really help the current of, yeah. bloat, right? No. Do, do you all right, Do you think that uh, fully validating nodes are always going to have to hold nearly the entire history? No, not at all. For for Bitcoin and for Ethereum Bitcoin, and, definitely not for Bitcoin. Well, let's let's talk about how Segwit impacts that too, right? So uh, if you're removing the witness, I mean, well, it depends on what you define as a fully validating node now, right? For me, it is uh, being able to act as a peer on the network and receive inventory messages and then get data like transactions, get blocks, compact blocks, and then be able to... You have to be able to bootstrap another node all the way back from the Genesis block? No. 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 Okay. See, no. that's an important not me, differentiator. Not for me. Right, right, right. So that's why I said it depends <clears throat> on what your definition of a fully validating node is. Because, well, well, it does run a scary possibility. If What if nobody can bootstrap all the way back from the Genesis block because everybody has pruned? You know, what do you do in well, that Will case? that matter? You know? <laughs> um, yeah, that is a factor. I, I do have to give you that, that um, not being able to bootstrap somebody else or having only a limited number of nodes that can do that is so it's you know, a, you know like when i when i say a full node i generally think of a node that could you know just bootstrap an empty peer okay you know I'll tell you, okay i just thought of that okay so if you look in bitcoin d right now the way so say you want to be a fully validating node of genesis block every bit of data from the block you know the whole 120 some gig right mm-hmm. um you can actually go to one of the nodes I just described as a fully validate, validating node. Yep. And you can get their compact block or their prune blocks because you're not validating any of the transactions within those blocks. No, you just anyway. need the headers, right? As long no, as you have well, the, yeah, you need the headers and you um, need the headers going back to the Genesis block, but they're right. they're not big at all. But yeah. even if you even if you uh, had a fully validating, it doesn't validate any of those transactions in there while it's building the blockchain. Uh, so it's pointless. I mean, you can go to like check level five, I think it is, and you'll, will do stuff like that. But for the default of a, of a full node with all the blocks, you're not even using that data anyway. It's like just worthless. Well, I mean, if, if you have, point. if you have a, you know, if you, you have a proof of work blockchain and you're going all the way back from scratch and you just rely on the headers yeah. and you, you get up to the current, then you can rely on that, right? I yeah, mean, the only thing you can do... So you do, can prune all transactions yeah. from the, that don't, you know, have an existing UTXO, you know, once that, right? Yeah, the only thing you can't do is have a TX index, have a transaction index with this type of thing. So if you were, get, if you were to bootstrap a, mm-hmm. a blockchain with my, you know, stripped down version... Mm-hmm. Uh, you would not be able to build a TX index because there are no TXs to index. There's nothing there. So it's like, oh, where is this transaction? It's like, oh, it's not in your blockchain because you didn't get the whole block. I got you. So Hmm. it would be hard to build a block explorer from that. (laughs) Yeah. How did the index now? Like, how uh, you know, just like serially? No, (laughs) I think that's in. There's no indexes in Bitcoin D. Uh All there is is you're just paying attention to your wallet addresses. Right. So transactions that come in that have to do with your your wallet's addresses. That's that's all you're really grabbing. So do you really see like in the future the only people that really have all like all the data are people doing like kind of chain analysis and like block explorers yeah. and stuff like that versus yeah. everyone else doesn't really need it? Yeah, I think that's valid. Well, if it's yeah. around for that reason, you know, because that's the, my big concern is that it disappears forever. Because right. once it's gone, it's, it's gone. But I yeah. mean, if people keep it alive for analytic purposes, you know what I mean? Because I could totally see that. You you know, especially if it you know keeps growing, you, you know, you're you're gonna have businesses make an entire you know huge pot of money just by controlling the data and the analytics that goes with it. And exactly. it, it'll be easy to verify the data because it's yep. more likely that people are gonna always hold on to the headers versus. Yep. The actual TX yeah, or say transactions. Like, say like so I ha- back say like up I your back block- up your blockchain. It could be worth a fortune. <laughs> well, yeah. it's going to be like old, like, yeah. you, like well, old, like um, collectibles. Like it's actually pretty easy because say like I just had a a pruned blockchain, but now I'm like, oh, I want everything because now I'm getting worried. I'm not going to be able to get all the data in mm-hmm. the future. So then I say, oh, hey, public library or hey, Google, like in your CDN, you have the blockchain, right? Oh yeah, give me start giving me the data. And I can I can validate that the data they give me is a hundred percent correct. It's like if they give me because even, it's going to match the Merkle root. Yeah, so, right. I mean, that, that's essentially. So yeah. you know, the only way that I'll get screwed is if I can't find anybody to give me that data. That's the only chance that I'll you know that I'll be like just nobody there to give me the data, and that will 
leave me out in the but, cold. But back to uh, back to Mike Casey's concern. Even I don't want this, right? But let's say the the Genesis block is lost all the way to you know block you know five hundred thousand or something. What what what's the big deal besides the well, idea? That's, that's checkpointing, right? Basically, as you say, well, we know it was valid. This was the hash as of this time. We're just ignoring everything before that, <laughs> you know. And that's a checkpoint. Basically, I, I would view that as like a hard fork. So basically, that would be a hard fork scenario where you you make the Genesis block is now block five eight four nine, and that's the new Genesis block, and we just go from there, right? Yeah. That would be, we have the UTXO set as of then. And then we have that that block, and we just delete everything prior to that. Yeah, we talked about that UTXO. But I mean, I view that as that's just a hard fork, hard fork reset. Either you go along with it or you don't. And <laughs> uh, question to Chris though: Would you say that it's always important that we hold on to at least the headers to verify that proof of work? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you should. Yeah. Now, for a proof of stake system, is it important to hold on to any of that data? I don't think it matters same, either same thing way. Going back. It doesn't matter as proof much. Of stake proof is of stake is fundamentally um, a bad idea in my opinion. Um, just because of the stuff Mike <laughs> Mike Casey's been talking about. I don't know how you feel about it, Tidwell, but like Well, I've already I've already said to me a proof of there's a very fine line be- between a proof of stake blockchain and a private blockchain. So pr- proof of stake and, is and I can awesome. Maybe go into as that long a as bit, it but. stays decentralized, but you never know if it is. You know. Yeah, and you can't. Well, prove. the second it's well, no, not, no, 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 it's no, no. Even, gone. You know. No, even <laughs> even if it is, even if it is, but think about it. Let's say there's a hundred people, right? That that uh, have most of the uh, Ethereum or whatever or Ether, mm-hmm. and they're the ones essentially making decisions on the network. Yeah. Now. You know, let's cut that in. You know, let's now. This might not be a good example. There's a federation of people, like a hundred people, that that de- have decide fifty one percent. Yeah, that, that yeah, decide on like a stake. private on the side on like a the what goes into this private database. That's not even considered a blockchain, but it's just distributed on like the permissions. I mean, that's pretty much what Ethereum is to me, and that's almost like now now br- br- bring it down to like two out of three, like where okay, a manager and a uh, employee you know whatever need to sign off on this you need two or three well that's we're almost getting to like to the point where the only thing that's you know there, there's not really a blockchain thing about it it's more like it's just distributed permission mm-hmm. it's almost like decentralized permission versus like which to me is like almost like a private system well yeah that's like, like it's almost getting to like a tra- a publicly transparent but it's almost like has so, the same functionality of like a privately owned system. Right, right. But it's well, still public. You have, you have, to, you have yeah. to differentiate that because you can have a public uh, permission blockchain. You can have, you exactly. can have a permission a public, blockchain yes. that, that only permission people can write to, but is publicly but, viewable but it, by but all. What I'm trying to say is right. it's, it's almost going to have the attributes of a permission blockchain because it costs so much money to I've, hold a key. I've said, which I've is said like, this before. You know, like a billion dollars or something. It's the end be game like, of proof of stake to me looks like an insanely large consortium. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It's still a consortium yeah. blockchain. It's just really big. <laughs> you know, that's well, what it yeah. looks well, it's like to It's to a point where if you want to be one of the people, like, you know, two or three that have to sign off on something, you have to like... It's it's almost like a it's almost like a think about like any company though if you have a billion dollars you can own that company yeah yeah, like, yeah. yeah, there, there, yeah. there's no there's no real difference to me in uh in in what Ethereum will be in my opinion versus like a publicly audible but private you know so you, the the problem system. is that Mike Casey Permission, pointed this out he yeah. So the main factor Dude, for Dude, I me, just say a lot of stuff, man. No, here here's the here's why proof of stake <laughs> is an incredibly bad idea. And it's 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 the immutability. It's it's a lack of immutability. The, no, it's, it's that's immutability. Not, you don't want immutability with proof of stake because if you're one of those key holders, you want to be able to do whatever you want to do. See, yeah, you don't I, fundamentally understand. I, I know you're making the you're, no, no. You're what being I'm trying, no, no, I'm not either because <laughs> I, I'm kind of being sarcastic, but not really because. Be, because if stuff gets messed up, you want to be able to control what's going on. And, well, yeah, and that's, 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 that's the whole saying. idea of it. That's why we I'm, can fix it. That's know? why I'm saying. <laughs> that's why I'm saying. It's not like to me. It's like it's not really like a blockchain. It's like Ethereum. Like is its own creative invention. Like it's it's. A, it's I know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think See, I, I don't don't subscribe think, to it. I would still it, say it's, it's a blockchain, but I mean, because this is. It's it sucks because there is no way to come across an adequate you know fits all 
proper definition for a blockchain because everybody has different connotation as to what it is. I mean, some people think Hyperledger is a blockchain. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I just think I, we're not proof of stake people. This, at least, at least I'm not. I just I don't I don't buy into. I'm, it. It's not what I signed on I'm for. I'm big so. on proof of stake uh, Ethereum as long as so I have like a million ether. As long as you have a stake in up, it, right? yeah. As long it's as I have a stake. It's interesting you bring up Hyperledger because Hyperledger's got a pluggable consensus model. But I mean, if you look at the the, the modes of the pluggable consensus, it's got proof of work. It's like, why would you ever want to do proof of work if in you, a private blockchain? If, if, it makes no sense. No, no. Like, imagine different departments <laughs> saying, uh, Mr. CEO. Buy more, buy Mr. more CPU yeah, power. Yeah. yeah. Wait, no, you, they tell the CTO or the CIO or whatever, uh, yeah, we need to order uh, 50 GPUs to compete with uh, DevOps <laughs> or to compete with, you know, QA. Like, they're, they're being assholes, you know. We, we, we don't trust them. <laughs> the marketing team's manipulating the budget. <laughs> <laughs> we need more GPUs. Well, no, there, like, there's a there's a factor there. Well, if you so the humi- the immutability thing, it could play a, a role here. If you had a consortium where maybe you did have parties that didn't trust each other, mm-hmm. and um, they can rewrite the blockchain and whatever. Well, exactly. So that's why right? proof of proof of work is is a useless plug-in consensus for a consortium blockchain because it only <clears throat> proof of work only works at scale. It only works if one entity has zero chance of competing against the rest. Right. For, you know, and, and that's definitely not the case in something small, you know, like like a consortium, right? You, you, it, 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 the only way blo- uh, Bitcoin works with proof of work is it's literally each individual against the rest of the world. And that's the only way proof of work works. And so, I mean, it's funny. You see it and, I, you know, you can even tell like like uh, the Hyperledger guys, they pay lip service to proof of work. Oh, yeah, we have proof of work, you know, but they... I couldn't see anybody ever using proof of work in a consortium blockchain. Yeah, it makes zero sense. You know? Yeah, they fundamentally don't understand why. Like they, like the NXT people were classic at this. They would say, "Well, it's, you know," or even the Ethereum people were like, "Oh, it's so wasteful. We want to do away with this." It's like you don't, you don't get why this thing is proof of work in the first place. So of course you're going to say it's in that we don't need to do this. It's wasteful, right? Mm-hmm. They don't get it in the first place. They don't get why what proof of work is. Well, I mean, so so this is this is what's so fortunate about the situation we're in right now is we have a market now, and it will you know proof of work versus Ethereum is eventually I'm <sighs> assuming going to be proof of stake. These I would, things I will would play say, themselves yeah. out in the market, and we will actually know because it's kind of an unknowable question at this point until it actually we go through the exercise of determining what actually works and what does not. You know, it, it's hard it's hard to know though quickly. With so much speculative exuberance, it's hard. It's, <laughs> well, that's the it's whole hard thing. to know quickly, though. It, and when I say quickly, I mean like even two years from now, three years from now. Like, oh if, yeah, like we might not know for a long time. Like we might just have to look back in history and be like, oh, okay. Although, because <laughs> there's so much speculation. See, what, what's cool though is we have such a plethora of these systems now, right? It, it's good because because um, the uh, the heterogeneous nature of it means you know if if the asteroid hits right and and you know all of these blockchain systems die off likely one will survive right doge <laughs> god damn it that's why you doge. should have got some doge doge cannot die <laughs> because it is a meme well, when, is, if you hedge only the way, meme can die the meme already died <laughs> if you if you hedge not according to the with price monero, hedge with hedge with monero right because they don't use the same crypto they have totally different systems and well everything. that's true that's a good point and you know uh crypto crypto night or crypto note sorry crypto note um that was the it, it's it's a totally different curve mm-hmm. and, and and all the aspects of it it's it's not the same tech are, you, stack. are you talking about monero or something else? monero yeah right it's oh no it uses, note, right? no it uses a a curve called ed25519 right. which is the so so if this that's, that's dogecoin by the way it, it's been uh, go- it's been whoa, pumping whoa, like crazy this? yeah yeah that's 2017 uh, somebody left their, so somebody left their trading bot open 3x yeah, but it's not quite as high. But the pr- the U.S. dollar price, of course, is the uh, highest. Is that the market cap? Or, yeah. yeah. Anyways, I just thought you'd so find that funny. That's hilarious, though. The, Do- mar- the market cap right is now. higher than it's ever been. I that's forgot. Awesome. I left my Doge <laughs> Good trader. For them. Uh, I left my Doge trader active, and look what it's doing. It's doing crazy <laughs> stuff. <for it>. <laughs> <laughs> I got to log in there to see what it what is done. Over the so past 18 um, wow. Okay, so it has tripled to. So, 
Three so, tenths of a cent. Well, cool. So, all right. Sorry to detract, but yeah. Well, no, so you, no, 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 no. It's a very God, valid they point. Got 540 people. What? All right. Sorry. Five hundred forty. So, so um, that's a very valid point from a trading perspective. Honestly, it doesn't matter what prices you're talking about. It doesn't even matter, honestly, long term prospect. What matters is a percentage increase or decrease if you're trading. Because like if you if you at a lower point before it hopped, you threw five hundred bitcoins into Doge, you would have fifteen hundred bitcoins after you know. Yeah, that's all that matters: percentage increase or decrease. So, I mean, so are you advising our listeners to put five hundred bitcoins? <laughs> Absolutely <in>? not. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm advise if you, if you do trading, please. I'm not advising don't anything. Trade. I'm just. <laughs> I, I would say get a bot to trade for you. Like it's <laughs> incredibly tedious to trade doge i mean th- think about it. like are people sitting there going oh now's the time you know you know you know what's hilarious too <laughs> you know what's hilarious is like uh uh you know when when they make those transactions it literally has to match each one uh and so so those are those are partitions so small and people can put such such small amounts like if you do a trade it could be hundreds of millions of individual transactions that you're doing in any given trade yeah, it's crazy it's funny um well I want to talk a little bit more about all these ICOs that have been clogging up the Ethereum network. And it's so the most uh, recent one was uh, Status or Civic? Which one was the most I recent? I think Civic was most recent. And Jesus, there's like one after another. It's like well, every day these well, days. Well, they, they have to take turns. Like It's almost like they have to coordinate because if two or three ICOs come out on the same day, they're going to screw each other up. They so didn't it's even have like, to. I mean, they, they screwed each other up anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, it's but... Like, it, well, the it, Ethereum it, network was so clogged after Status that... Um, well, anyways, I've been getting uh, so Emily, the one that's coordinating with us for the the shapeshift mm-hmm. presentation, or Emily, what's her last name? Because <sighs> we used to have an Emily that worked at BitPay. I wonder if it's the same person. Uh oh, I hope I'm not getting her in trouble. It's like uh, Emily Shapeshift, I think is her name. <laughs> Up there is it? Down. Is that her maiden name? Um, em- <laughs> Emily Shapeshift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, I took it. Yeah, is that her maiden name? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> I just realized what you said. What's her married name? What's her maiden name? Yeah. Uh, you know what? Maybe she... Anyway. Um, I don't know. She doesn't have a last name, apparently. No, she does because... <laughs> she she didn't sign it. Yeah. Maybe she... She's Emily. Like, she... Just says Emily, chief marketing officer. Wow. I wonder if she really is trying to not dox her. I don't know. Like... Is she trying to stay in? All right. Anyways, anyway, Emily. Whatever. Emily. Emily was shapeshift. <clears throat> she's uh, she's pretty much blasting out like you know the at channel on Slack where you tell everyone who's in the channel. Yep. She's pretty much blasting everyone every time a ICO or every time Ethereum gets clogged up. Like, hey guys, we just got a ton of support tickets. Most let you know it's not us, it's Ethereum. Yeah. You know, like, and she's doing that. Uh, you think she would do it like once a day or something, dude? She's doing it like ten times a day because like so many crazy like. Well, of- yeah, because they keep yeah. getting tickets. People keep oh, I'm just gonna swap dude, she, a little bit of this for that. She has a full time job. Like when I say full time job, I mean like a hundred and twenty hour a week job. <laughs> like she, yeah, she's constantly on Twitter like talking to well, people. Yeah, or, uh, uh, she, Slack. Somebody needs to just write a bot for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but essentially, is, right? <laughs> yeah. But but essentially, that's uh, why she doesn't have a last name. <laughs> Emily is just a bot. I've been talking Emily's to an AI. Bot. I've been talking to an AI this entire time. No wonder. Emily Shapeshift. <laughs> I've been talking to Shapeshift's bot for like uh, the last couple of months. But dude, damn, I knew Eric was advanced, but man, that that really takes. <laughs> he <a> automated <laughs> his secretary. <laughs> <laughs> but but I've been keeping tabs. I've been able to keep tabs on uh all these ICOs that come out because she's like, hey, the status ICO, hey, the Civic ICO, blah blah. And um, oh yeah, Wayne. So you're, you're active in their Slack and the Shapeshift Slack. I have Slack open. I just don't really participate because I wanted to talk to Emily on there. Like, hey, gotcha. to coordinate. To coordinate um, to them, yeah. But it's been interesting to see like how active she is on Slack. Like, literally, there would be some days where she has like ten at channels. Like, hey guys, uh, this just happened. Hey guys, this just happened. Hey guys, this is back so online. Hey, that this I will is- do. I'll, I'll plug Shapeshift, man. They are a really good <laughs> service. I mean, I've, I've, I, you know, they, they're very reliable from what I've seen. I mean, I mean has anybody had any different experiences? I mean, no, stuff I, gets stuck occasionally, but they yeah. always take care of it. I like, have only had good experiences using Shapeshift, um, and I want to talk about Shapeshift, uh, Shapeshift a little bit more. But real quick on the ICO stuff, 
Do you all know anyone who's actually putting money into the ICOs? Uh, I think um, we have a friend. Because I asked on tab, and like like one person said they were. I'm 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 a little concerned with a lot of these. It's it's a very small number of people buying up a very large number of the tokens. Do Do you yeah. know anybody? I don't. I don't really know anybody. Well, no. Well, I mean, of course. I, I mean, I, it depends no. on the circles you travel in. Too. Wait, so hold on. <laughs> Most people Wait. I know really hate Ethereum and all yeah, the ICOs. Exactly. <laughs> Wayne Vaughn said these are pretty much like big time VCs that are buying up a That's lot. That's what of these I ICOs, think it is. Yeah, which I, I, isn't like your your average you know ethereum or bitcoin holders these are like VCs we're starting we're shit. starting to get very dot commy we're starting to this, this is the is beginning of it literally these icos in my opinion are like equivalent to pets pets you know the the super evaluate the super over evaluation of pets.com oh pets.com i don't think we're there yet no we're i think, getting close i think i think <laughs> these icos are pretty much spot on with that in my opinion, well, I mean, literally, they're buying until nothing. you see a sock puppet on the Super Bowl. We're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I like, forgot about yeah, that sock that's, puppet. Yeah, that's that's the bar there. That's the bar. <laughs> okay, so wait, so wait for <laughs> wait for Super Bowl ads. Wait, well, yeah, or something, something of that. Uh, you know, like because yeah, you know, right now Caliper. it's just rich people throwing money at stuff, which you know the average Joe doesn't pay attention. You to. know, it's funny is I I got one of those sock puppets. Oh, you a do? little dog with a with a microphone. You still have it. No, I sold it on eBay oh. for, like, for like mad mad bucks because people were like buying memorabilia from those times. Oh man! I, put, I remember putting it in a, one of those postal boxes and sending it to somebody because I sold it. Oh, man, that, that's that's a piece of history right there. I know, so. man. Maybe it's gonna be worth more money now. I don't know. How long ago did you sell it? Years ago. Oh yeah, that's cool though. I was like, I have this sock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with the Civic, so Civic did something weird or interesting. They had like a queue. They had like this artificial queue or something. Mm, well, so, like, it's it's good. At least they're starting to do inventive so, so stuff. So, so pretty much, I correct me if I'm wrong in the comments of this uh, video or audio, whatever you end up finding this on. But I almost want to say it didn't really matter what transaction fee you paid. Once you're in the queue, once you're in the queue, you're in the queue. So you can pay a big transaction fee. Doesn't mean you're going to get to the front of the queue necessarily but here's the other thing that's really confusing there's two queues there's a ethereum queue and a bitcoin queue so i don't really know if this was like oh, automated yeah. with like an outside service or something or whatever but or, there was something kind of like where people were getting really upset like wait a minute i've been waiting in this queue for a really long time and you use this queue and you like you went in the because that queue's faster or something and it was like this big weird like so, if the ethereum network goes down then everyone that queue has to wait. So here's my or solution. What, what are problem. these queues? Are they so, so here's, here's, here's I, the I don't really Back know. up for, back up for yeah. a second. Right. So here's the problem. Uh, I don't because I don't know. You have, probably haven't been paying attention to ICOs because you don't give a shit. But uh, the the problem is uh, the bat sale. Did you remember that? Hear about that, the bat? That's actually one thing I do like. I do like the right. Bats. Well, see, here was yeah. the problem yeah, though. Like basic attention token. Yeah, but but brave. Wait, they, really? they sold out like yeah. ten people. Yeah. Well, it's kind of cool because you you have to imagine a browser with no ads. That you just, you know, you pay just like a micro transaction on your website just to visit and show the content. Yeah, but why would someone, uh, I, I think the, the argument of Dan Anderson or who, I forget who was, why would someone do that versus using Google AdSense because they can make more money? They can't make more money. What do you mean? Google AdSense doesn't pay you hardly anything. It only pays I re- you. It's I, the I same amount of money. If It's it's whatever. So Because if, if, if Google pays you one one trillionth of a cent. Or the customer pays you one one trillionth of a cent every time they visit the page. Do you give a shit who pays you? You don't care. No, all that's no, up but to no, no, money. no. That's not what I'm saying because, uh, well, first off, do you all the, all everything w- within bats? Is there like a fa- finder's fee, or do they take a cut of everything? I I, I haven't looked at. I don't, honestly because don't know exactly how Brave or Bats 100 percent works. But I'm just talking about the general idea is a good one. All right, all right. Um, well, well, hold on. Let, let's get back to the whole ICO thing. So, so the the Bats ICO when they did it, the Bat ICO, it's uh, they um, they sold out within like five minutes, and basically ten people, which were all VCs ended up with the entirety of the bat tokens so like you know you're, you're talking about okay now it's just like one firm bought them all and it's like so the, the crowd sale was an epic failure and it was just basically a, a vc buyout right right so so i mean so it's not a crowd sale at that point 
So, so here's my proposal. So that's what they started with this queue things, right? So they lined up people in queues saying, and, and I'm assuming, right? So this was for quota. And I think you can only buy so much at a time. Yeah, but I mean, there's no way you can't cyble queue that. Well, right, exactly. Which is so, so what's my solution to this? Proof of work. So imagine if you come up with a new algorithm that's never really been done up. There are no ASICs for it. You just say, hey, GPU power wins. You have to mine a certain oh, number CPU. of blocks. Yeah, C- CPU. CPU, yeah. Because yeah. you yeah. wouldn't so even have memory, time to make Memory hard. Yeah. yeah, you don't don't have GPU. You don't have, so so you just say this and say, okay, yeah, you and can it, buy it, as much as you mine. Go. And, and, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> and it won't be, and it won't, we, you well, won't know what it is until like the release date with the algorithm. Right, be, exactly. So and you release, you do it. The, the, only, the only way somebody can cheat at that is the Mirai botnet or. <laughs> you know, whatever. You just throw enough CPUs at it, but but yeah. But I mean, I think that would be a much fairer way is to just leverage proof of work to to bootstrap an ICO because you know it's like oh okay you know a VC they can only scramble together so many CPUs and you know have them up and running at the time. I mean, of course, you can rent that stuff too, but it would give it would give your your average Joe whatever who just wants to buy a piece a shot. That's what I think. Well, if they know how to to get bootstrapped and get get their GPU set up and all that. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, well, at this point, you know, it'd be CPU, not GPU. But I mean, yeah, you the only way you could get an advantage is basically whether it's a an actual one or, or a rented one is just to have a botnet. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's how that's how like BitShares got started. It was a cluster. Speaking but. of BitShares, holy crap, the price is pumped like crazy. BitShares what happened is still there? around. Pull it up. Yeah, it's still. Around. Uh, okay, I will. I they had an epic fail when they started because you know they had a problem. I with haven't their, seen bit shares in forever. It's somebody mined like a ton of them. Right it's away. number nine. It's in the top ten, Mike. Holy shit! Yeah, it is. Oh, it did pump up. Everything's pumping, but everything's about to so. Oh, so, so hold six. on, hold on. Just just uh, let's see. May third, it 6X. was point zero 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 one. And now I, see, here's what I wonder. I wonder how much zero, Daniel zero, Larimer one. held on to. I wonder if he held on to any, <laughs> or when he walked away and left it over to the community, if he sold it. <laughs> and he's like, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I wonder why. It, so do, that, why, why did it pump so much? That's well, I don't know, but I do know one thing. Is I it, was watching a Bitcoin video the other day, mm-hmm. and then the next video that was like recommended was like BitShares. I was like, eh, I'll watch it. And I watched it, and it had like forty thousand views or something. Or and I was like, I wonder if it was almost like marketing that made BitShares like popular to a bunch of newbies that then bought some. I don't know. Is is that even? Does I mean, that even see, sound possible yeah, to you? It's possible because you're seeing the same pop in a lot of coins like this. It's possible. It's just the rampant speculation of this stuff has gotten so that people go bargain hunting. You know what well, I mean? Well, no. Yeah, I think what cheap. I'm trying to say is, I think what spurred it was, you know, marketing of like because. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm entirely sure you possible. Can, I'm pretty sure you can push your YouTube videos if you're willing to pay. I mean, that's if entirely you, possible. If you had, if you had a web bot style, if you had a web bot style thing where you were looking at sentiment, and then you just you you had it go, oh, this YouTube video about Dash has like you know five hundred thousand views or something. That's true. You know, and you go, oh, my bot's gonna. You know, do bias. I mean, if, toward... if you're if you're looking to, to do speculation and just you know just buy shit coins in hopes of a rise, that would be what you look at. Is yeah. So Google Trends and and YouTube hits is is what you would just monitor and just watch those two things, right? Right. I mean, yeah. usually those <laughs> things like follow the price too. Right, or but, fall well, the price see, down. but that's the whole, that, <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. Is it's it's a feedback loop. So it starts with more of that, and then the price goes up, and then more people start looking at it, and then the price goes up more. And you know that's yeah. the same way Bitcoin and, works. And, and it might just have been that one whale made it pump a hundred percent one day to yeah, have well, enough see, people. Yeah, that's that's what yeah. you see a lot. You see pump and dumps. That's exactly what a pump and dump looks like too. Somebody will just like say, oh my God, it's cheap enough. I could spend, you know, $5 million and I could just put it all in right now and then people will see it and go ape shit and they right. will just buy, but buy, we, buy. Uh, and we, need a new, we need a w- new word for pump and dump because it's rarely a pump and dump anymore. It's actually a pump and then it's a Fibonacci like ride it, you know, and just and just uh, slowly suck suck it dry kind of thing. Yeah. So like a, it's like a pump and then vampire. <laughs> and then and then uh and then at the end 
it's a really high valuation and everyone who wanted to get out was already out and it's yeah. just bag See, holders. Yeah. And that's that's the difference. Bag hodlers? Between... Oh no. Did you just coin bag hodlers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, think it, that's true. Back I think you just did oh because if no. you just do a pump and dump Wait, I, i'm not the first one to say that i've I? never heard that <laughs> you just coined a new term you just all right well <laughs> i mean pretty much what you're saying after the vampires are gone it's the it's the bag hodlers the bag hodlers. yes <laughs> it's because it's all a game of that's musical. a good term for it. that because that's what i've been telling <laughs> this people. this episode is going to be t- titled back bag hodlers, hodlers. <laughs> i've been telling people they're like should i buy this or should i buy this ethereum should i buy this ico i'm like uh the answer is probably yes but you need you realize you're playing a, a game of musical chairs here so and you just need to know uh you know when you know when people are leaving so the that's, scene and get that's out. So that's the um that's the big difference you, between fundamental like speculative investment and and just, you know, technical, s- right? Because if this was it like and it was just that, it was a flash in the pan, then it's it's 100% technical and it was just it the price went up because people bought in, right? Someone beat me to it this probably ass like, in like 2016. Five years, yeah. No, 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 <laughs> he he only beat me by uh by less like about a, about a year. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, I, I I really had to see if I was the, I, I was about to say I doubt hey, I was the first hey, one hey, to say hey. that. Is there domain available? <laughs> 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 Are we live streaming? Get it now! Hurry oh, up! Hurry up! So All right, what, guys. So I wanna, I'm term? going to cheapnames.com to try yeah, to So what's our, the term for for good pump? thing? Good thing no one's watching right yeah. now. So we're good. So. so what do you do when it's a pump and then it's it's almost like the match? It's almost like the air mattress. You like you go to sleep at night and by the end of the morning it's flat. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's like you pump it up at the beginning of the night and you know it slowly loses air over the night and when you know what it's time to get <laughs> and up. Then, and then you're, like your head's like fucking. Yeah. You know it's time to get up when up it's and, flat. You're right? It's a it's a flat tire. It's a it's a, uh, a, slow a slow leak. leak. A slow leak. It's yeah. a slow leak. Yeah. So so pump and dump, and then well, so pump and dump, and then uh, whatever Mike, slow leak. Uh, Mike, we have a guest that just said uh, that made our first comment that didn't retract the comment. Some guy named uh, Miguel Serrano. Some ass, that guy said uh, some people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, At least yeah, they'll know we're no, so if you if you buy these things, just you better know when to get out because it's gonna be quick, and these things are gonna go down fa- as fast as they came up. Yeah, right. Well, you know what I'm thinking is, you know that flash crash that we had with ETH. What if that happened on multiple exchanges at the same time and it didn't recover? That's the price of ETH. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I this mean, is like this could happen with anything. It could happen with Bitcoin. Well, yeah, but I mean, the whole thing is is uh, and it didn't recover. So, so this is the difference. I keep uh, that I've I've tried to say a couple times now. That's the difference between a technical crash and a fundamental crash. Like take, <gasps> you know, Doge <laughs> for example. Right? It, it went way up and then you know it just crashed and it kept going down and down and down. Now it spiked again. Now the question is. Has there any been anything to fundamentally change the value proposition of owning Doge? No. Nope. No. Well, then what reason do you have to believe that this spike will persist? The, the, the only thing that I can say that that might happen is if now enough interest is in it that people who have bought in actively start recoding it and add new functionality... That is, in fact, a fundamental difference. Doge is going to add Segwit and yeah, exactly. Lightning and Doge so like, networks, <laughs> off-chain, off-payment uh, yeah, Doge if, channels. If, if, if somebody yeah, just going to be grabs... called the Puppy Network. <laughs> the Puppy Network. <laughs> I kind of want it. The Puppy <laughs> Sidechain. I mean, we're all going to be exchanging Dogecoin for, like, you know, friends. And Dude. then you do, like, your business transactions with Bitcoin. And then you do your... Right. Live hey, studio Thomas. audience. Let's <laughs> go up, Thomas. What were we talking Doge about? Doge could have all kind of meme side chains, right? <laughs> so, like, <laughs> right? Yeah, you could have like a cat side chain. Yeah, or, yeah, like a, a Heathcliff you know. side chain, a Garfield side chain. All right, all right. Um, other news. Oh, what? A, oh, so the reason I brought up shape uh, shapeshift as well was. Uh, have y'all heard of Mike? I don't know. Another his last Mike. Name. <laughs> yeah, M- Mike <laughs> Monero monitor guy. He does a podcast by himself, uh, the Monero Monitor. No, I don't think I've seen that one. It, it's it's pretty good. Uh, it, it, it's interesting. He's an interesting guy. He doesn't just talk about Monero. He talks about all other kinds of things. And the other cool thing that he does is he 
interviews the developers of the Monero project or, you know, contributors and stuff, which mm -hmm. I was like, dude, this is awesome. So uh, props to you, Mike. Um, we'll, he'll probably join our podcast. We'll just be the Mike, 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 Mike show, and you, you'll have to change your name to Mike. Okay. But uh, anyways, he, he was interviewing Eric Voorhees. I listened to it, and uh, I've always, like, for some reason was under the impression if you're going to launder money, you'd use, like, Shapeshift, right? That's what I was always. So, under yeah, the I was actually reading your your notes beforehand, and I was like, "Man, you didn't know that everything's public." No, no, I did. Or... No, I did. Well, I just, I just didn't figure that it was wasn't good for money laundering. It's still or less of a concern with Monero. I mean, it's not a hundred percent, but I mean, there's there's some security provisions in Monero that that delink a little bit, you know. But didn't didn't we always? talk about or what's, whatever but what's your uh, concern so no, your no, concern no. My, is my my thought originally was uh shapeshift was good to use for you know like money laundering or Absolutely whatever. but not yeah. the only thing like, like you you moved good it to use so, stuff other than yeah. just it like okay if you swap out bitcoin for ethereum 100 percent public totally traceable both chains right. it's like yeah that's it so if you so go anybody's from, looking say bitcoin to dash and then you then you do dark, you know, you, you do mix, mix do private dark, send, dark mix, and then you send private it back. send. But you do all that through Tor. <laughs> it's yeah. You know, so there, you just yeah. have to do like things that aren't likely. Like, oh, the hacker would have never exchange back to Doge. Like, you just have to do like. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> like, can do that. Why you not? To, you have to make it look like you have to like stagger your payments to different like shape shift. Like, yeah, you well, do. No, I mean, see, this is one of the actually. If you think about it, this is one of the. Uh, it kind of lends itself to being able to do that. One of the natural limitations of Shapeshift is there's actually a pretty low weak cap uh, on your per transaction yeah. output. So, so as a consequence of that, a lot of them being you know end up being about the same volume. So, if the vast so, majority of transactions but, are but about the same but, volume, you have no idea who it is. Well, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. I always, I was always under the impression that Shapeshift was if you want to launder money or whatever, people would be using that, but. But he was, I don't know if he was just doing this because, like, you know, he wants to not make it sound like he has, like, a money laundering service or whatever. But he was saying, like, he hasn't, <laughs> so, hold like, on. Shapeshift is awful. He said Shapeshift was pretty much awful or terrible for money laundering people because everything's public. Well, so and that's, I, was thinking, that's, I never thought that was bad dude, for money have laundering. have you pulled up Shapeshift's page on the About Us page? It's awesome. Like, yeah, yeah their, their, their statement on money laundering, it's, 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 I love it. Well, let's, let's read it. Let's yeah. read it for everybody. Uh, Shapeshift IO. Let's see if it just comes up. Yep, first link. What What are they supposed to say? Yeah, like this well, is yeah. this is awesome I, for money laundering. No, no, no. But he was the he about. Was, he was or, he was very clear. I know, though. but he has to. No, no. But I I love this. Yeah. <laughs> he has so this to. is this is Eric's position on on money laundering. Is uh, is it here? How do you spell? No, laundering? it's a. It's, uh, AML maybe? Uh no. Uh, I don't know. The last time I looked at it was years ago. I don't know where it is. Uh, if he was really serious about anti money laundering, he would be located in the United States and not in Switzerland. Where they yeah, have but I mean, the, we have the no, strictest no, he I thought it was Panama. No, they're they're in Switzerland. I, I don't know I don't know if he has it on anymore. Uh, he his offices are out of Panama. I don't know where he's incorporated. No, no, he's incorporated. He's in in Switzerland. He Is said he that now? many times. Oh, he shit. wasn't. He wasn't Panama, oh, and then they moved. chased him I out didn't of there. He moved. They so, chased him out of Panama, huh? Well, not they didn't chase him out. The government was still harassing him. Yeah. So so, but uh, and and this was this was a long time ago. So he he may have pulled it down or whatever. Uh, but it'd be in the fact, it'd be in the fact if it's anywhere. All right, let's go. Um. Uh, mm -hmm. Are these like that's a help center? That's not a fact. Anyway, so so I I'm paraphrasing, but I I, I think he he said he said so it's like that's the stupidest thing you could possibly yeah, do no. because everything is public. <laughs> exactly, we, we literally post every transaction publicly. Right, so that's the dumbest thing you could. Wait, do. wait, wait! <laughs> you you listen to the. The podcast? No, or, no. Or this was this was literally times. what was on the site. I remember reading the site no, when no, it came because, out because that sounds like exactly what he said during yeah, the podcast. I know, but yeah. what else yeah. is he gonna say? No, I was. I'm just. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, hey! I'm just saying. Was he just saying that to kind of like cover his? No, but they ass they do. Bit, so so they 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 put it out there and it's publicly in front. You can snarf all day long. So the government or any anybody who wants to can sit there and they can snarf every single transaction that comes out of Shapeshift and they can do whatever analysis they want. On it. I, I guess the real question I have to both of you: 
do you agree with, with no, that? No, I do not. Okay. Okay. Even, Andre- even Andreas says that. I agree with. I agree with it if it is not protected by another layer. In some some okay. form or fashion. Okay, so in other words, dumbest if you don't, thing ever. So in yes. other words, if you don't send it to Dash or Monero or Zcash or something. No, or, yeah, and and you know you obviously would want to like obfuscate your your IP address as well. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if and if the the source address from Bitcoin side, if you're you know if it's a known like you just got it from Coinbase, it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Right? That's true, yeah. So you don't want to send directly from Coinbase I, to Shapeshift. I, I think into... Miguel's girlfriend's watching us right now. Oh, yeah. Angela? Yeah, Angela. There needs to be Why? a no-nonsense. Why do you think that? Comments on the... <laughs> there needs to be a no-nonsense way to launder money, right? <laughs> like, we need definitive, like, this is how you should do it. I thought Monero was the <laughs> we need, no-nonsense we, way to we, launder we, money. We, we need a smart contract called... Yeah, You, you know what's funny? I was thinking about, uh, sorry, I was thinking about the 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 ransomware stuff again. Would the guy who's maintaining that GitHub repo possibly go to jail? Because you know how they've you know how they they've target developers and other situations before. It, well, if if you write code that is with the explicit, uh, you know, it's of a, protecting people to make sure they get their key back. Oh no, see that's it's that's almost a different like scenario. it's almost like they're saying, look. We don't like they could put in the readme dot markdown or whatever. They we could, do not encourage. We don't. Endorse. We don't encourage ransomware. But if you have to do it, it's almost like if you're, you know, almost like the yeah. sex talk or whatever. It's it's like if you're going to do it, at least wear a condom, <laughs> you know. Like <laughs> it's like when you're scalping tickets at the uh, at the forum, and you're all you say is that you want to buy tickets, not that you want to sell tickets. All, all this buying stuff. tickets, buy tickets. No, they go. You, they go. What the scalpers do is they is they go around and say. Um, and they say, uh, "I need, I need tickets. I need tickets, right?" Yeah. And and so everybody knows, like that. They're, they're just, they're just wanting to sell t- scalp tickets because it's not illegal to ask. It's for not them. illegal it's, to it's ask. It's illegal to yeah. to sell. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of a sham. It's like the paper bag when you're drinking in public. You know, you just slip a paper bag over the, over the drink, and you can do it. <laughs> but uh, still, it's technically illegal. It depends on where you live, man. Up in up in Roswell, you can walk around with an open container. I know. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I I just wanted to ask you all that. Um, so did y'all hear about chain analysis during like I don't know there I don't know what the heck was going on. Some hearing they're pretty much saying that they know where the Mount Gox Bitcoin are. I heard a little bit of a rumor about that. I don't. I still what, don't buy what, it. What do What do you think? I, I'm sure people at BitPay talk about this. I don't know where they 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 can't know where the coins are. You know, like they, they can't said, they were them. certain. They said they were certain. Okay, well then they must know where the private keys are being stored on disk somewhere or something like that. Is that the, is that what they're saying? I I think they know where they are through chain analysis. They, that's well, they, that's, they, that's what I was they're claiming. That's what they I was know saying. which addresses hold the phone. Oh, yes. of course. I mean, that's not hard. You, you, you can say. Well, the, no. I mean, I, no, uh, I don't. I don't maybe. know. Uh, no. So like, they kind of they kind of disappeared in the ether. And, and I I always in, in ether. Anyway, and I always <laughs> they I always. Did. <laughs> Probably <laughs> they, they, actually, they probably shift. did at some point. That's, uh, that's a new but meaning, yes, though. <laughs> <laughs> but they disappeared into the ether. <laughs> so, no, but um, I've I've always personally believed that you know it was the coins never really were stolen. I, I think I think it was, I think Mark Carpellas after he was frozen for funds from Dwala and they they took that five million dollars from him. He lost his operating capital, right? So he couldn't sustain. So, but no big deal. He runs the largest Bitcoin exchange in the world. He flows all this money through him. He takes all these exorbitant fees. So he just borrowed from the kitty because, like, he was the only game in town, right? And so he did this and, you know, and he used that to fund his operations and his lavish lifestyle, whatever, for a while. Um, and then he didn't realize that, that you know, in 2013, yeah. we were going to have that epic run up. And, and, you know, all of a sudden, he couldn't pay him back. You know, because they were worth too much. And I also think that's where Willybot came in. That's my theory. Is I think Willybot was not a bot created to drive up the price. No, it was his attempt to try to buy back the coins he owed. Because <laughs> it was just all it was doing was constantly <laughs> just buy a little, just buy a little, just buy a little. And it, it had the effect of driving up the price, which of course made it harder for him to buy it back. And uh I think that's what happened. But you know, it's just a theory. Anyways. Let's talk about one of your topics, and I'm all excited that you have topics on your little 
I, 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 made I did my us. homework this yeah. time. So, so what is this? I don't really know what this is. Header signaling NYA versus Does that BIP make any nine. sense to you? Header signaling yeah. NYA versus BIP 9, BIP 4. So what, what does that mean? How do you signal NYA? It's, it's a New York you're... agreement. So it's... <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, NYA is New York agreement. No, you signal that in your op return. In the op return of, of uh, the, Coinbase. The, the Coinbase transaction. And that's that's currently the pre-signal. So they're, like, they're not... Because wait, there's wait, no code released yet. Whoa, 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 huh? whoa, whoa. Because... Hold on. Because there, there is code release. I released it myself. Oh, oh, oh it's alpha, hold on. right? Hold on. Or is hold it beta? On. Well, they're it's not going to run alpha code on a production release candidate. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, there's no production wait, code. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait. Because we're not using the BIP system? Is that why? No, it's that they don't want to uh, turn bits on and off because there's other reasons that. They don't want to do that. So, so when they use when they start using the Segwit two X, so that's just an indication in the opcode that they plan on using the Segwit two X software when it becomes available, or at least by the time of activation. Yeah, but that's usually an, it's an intent. But marker. usually people do that through the BIPs. No, they don't. I mean, no, all this stuff. When or, you're looking or, at, or, or how do you signal normally? When you here's look at, why they don't want to do that. Hold on, when you look at Coin Dance, that's always this method. Coin dance, anything that shows up op on return? Coin, op return on the coin base. No kidding. They parse it. Yeah, that's oh, how it works. Okay. They don't use the official BIP9 stuff. Well, all right. BIP so I, how, how do you normally sig- – like when we talk about, okay, he's uh, signaling on BIP1 and that means like BIP, you know, whatever. Right. How, how, do, how do they normally – where are these bits at? What, in They're the in the block header. So what, what part of the header? What is it called? Uh, the block header. I'm sorry. So in the block header, it's 80 bytes. One of those fields is the is the version. Version. The block version, and it's four bytes. Yeah. Okay. So it's 32 bits. We right? have 32 bits of signaling what we want to do. Right. And I was imagining the reason. And usually those comply to the bips, right? They comply to that's bip nine that specifies use this use this version, right? What what usually says like okay if I want. To, 10 megabyte blocks, uh, I want to designate one of those bits for my signal. How do I usually go? Okay. I have to go through that's, Luke Dash Jr., right? No, thank you. Thank yeah, you that's that the up. thing. You have to go have talk to, go to Luke Dash Jr. That's he's what I'm gotta, saying. He's mm-hmm. got to basically reason, assign a bit to you. Okay, that's that's what I'm saying. So, Is so, that why we're using op return and not the version? Right. No. Well, no, well no, 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 not for explicitly, but it started with BU. Because BU couldn't get anything pushed through, yet they wanted miners to be able to signal. So that's like when they started this whole thing, and it may have even started before that with like XT or whatever, because they couldn't they couldn't get it through either, right? No, like oh, what, so. Here's why so they're using off return has been pretty much the de facto. That's way. what they've been using for anything no, you've on. seen you on Coin Dance. Is what so I'm saying. Let's, let's, question, let's let Chris answer the question. His question was, why are they doing this thing in the op return saying NYA, right? And the reason, and not just signaling bit four and bit one like they're supposed to, and the reason is because the code isn't isn't released yet. So if they start signaling now, they could actually activate Segwit before they even running the code. That would be awesome. So uh, <laughs> they don't want to do that. So they need the code to get so, released yeah. uh, out of release candidate stage. And I was saying earlier that I know it's been released because I released it myself. So this is a pre-intent signal. You know what I mean? It's I not you. the actual activation. Let, signal. let me ask you a question though. When they when it is released, are they going to use the version header? Or yeah, yeah, they'll release. Yeah, right. So the when you look at the version header, you'll see values like five hundred, you know, five million eight hundred and thirty thousand, that kind of thing. And if you convert that to hex, it just looks like the number two, uh, with zero, uh, zero, zero. with um, five zeros and then and then two and then one. So and what that means is that. The, the most, the least significant bits on there, that's where you put your flag, right? So bit zero um, is uh, check sequence verify, and that's been activated, so you don't need to worry about that one. Bit one is SegWit proper. And then bit four, and then bit four, so the fourth uh, bit in there, or sorry, the fifth one, I guess would be, because it's you know zero based, that is the new SegWit 2X. So you have to signal both bit four and bit one, and then you get um, you get this so, new yeah. Segwit two X. So thing. Segwit activates and Segwit combined with hard fork. And right. So those are the things you're seeing. Right. But we can only so that allows us to do twenty nine simultaneous either soft forks or hard forks with bit nine because you you can you can use twenty nine of those. You can't use the last three because they're reserved for other things. 
Um, That's interesting. We'll yeah. talk about that later. <laughs> so you can well, use everything well, else. Well, uh, since we're on the topic, what are they reserved for? Um, there's there's some compatibility issues with prior <laughs> BIPs that you need to, to have in there, like BIP 34 and that kind of thing. So BIP 34 was where you were specifying the the block height in the trend in the Coinbase's input. <coughs> so you could have like that you were squirreling away the block height in the trans in the Coinbase transaction. So interesting. Yeah. So that's when did, did they they do away with that? No, no it's still there. It's still but there. like you have to sort of when you have Segwit, you reuse that field. Right. So, so you kind of have to up. like work together with that. Yeah. So there's a lot of things. That let's do. let's talk about. Uh, is is that all you want to say? Or yeah, that, that, let's, let's yeah, talk I just, about. I just want to bring up the difference. This, this, Actually, this, this, this flows share, really well. Can you share before we do that? Just pull up Coin Dance and let's take a look at where we're at uh, right now. Yeah. Sure. Let me share that. Let yeah. me share that with our audience. I came in on Monday and I was like, our video audience. I was like, oh, it's happening. I was, <laughs> it's I was like, pretty cool. I was doing the whole. Uh, oh, the happy dance. It was happening. <laughs> oh, the Ron Paul. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was excited. Got a long time coming. Holy. Can you believe 90%? That's awesome. I haven't seen 90% on anything. Last time I looked at Coin Dance, it was 82% on the, the 144 block. But but I mean even our Bitcoin is admitting it's, it's up 90. There. Yeah. It's 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 like it's when happening. Our, when our yeah. Bitcoin like gives you 90%, you know it's that's gener that's they're being oh, they're, yeah. not, they're yeah. never generous with that, right? Well, you know, I, I go by what Coin Dance says generally. Uh and they're they're using uh the parsed NYA flag for that. And it's interesting. Have you seen what they've done? Have you looked at it? In the last couple of days, with the uh, opera turn with the NYA oh no thing? no just the way that they display it oh yeah um, with, the, with, the, with the with the grid yeah yeah how they're 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 now differentiating because they used to have it as there were three colors there was like the pinkish for Segwit two X and then there was a brown and a green now if you scroll down they have the little block okay so this is yeah, coin scroll, scroll coin dot dance. Yeah, you got it. Uh, this blocks. So, so there you see Segwit. Uh, it's seventy nine point nine right under now. 80. Just under eighty percent activation right Ooh. now for the last. How does that that's, make you feel? That's not true. That's that's not. That's How does that make you feel? That's what it says. As these are just the last hundred forty four blocks. So it, oh, okay. it, there's variance. There's variance. Okay. So I mean, this well, one well, is no. notorious with the variance. Wait, though, wait, 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 wait. It's wait. only the last day or so. Last thousand is fifty eight percent. It says intention. Yeah, that's the intention um, to support Segwit two X. It doesn't say intention for anything else. Yeah, because look, it's it's in the name. See Segwit two X intention. Oh, yeah, yeah <laughs> I see. That means it's not the actual activation. That's that's the that's what we were just talking about. Uh, All right. So why why NYA. is this why is this under eighty percent, sir? It's not. Well, just it, hold on. It just scroll it's down not. and I'll show you. So keep going, keep going down, keep going down, keep going down, keep going down, keep that's going not. down. The grid. Down, we down, need down, to look at the grid. Dude, nope, I'm just going to go all the way down. Way too far. There, that. Yeah. There you go. So see those red ones, right? <clears> That's <throat> weird. My monitor at work look they look pink. But <laughs> they're they're red, right? Um and you can see what pools those are, are Segwit two X and, and they're you know it tells you which client they're running. And they're Let's either see, running the first the first Segwit two X block was block four seven one six eight nine that and uh, done by Bitfury. Bitfury. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> see, like people are saying, Oh, Bitfury is not gonna be on two no. they were the first ones. Let's see. So we the got, last well, they one, just want two, three, we got F2, four, we got F2, five, we got BTC, six, we got uh, damn. Ample. The last eight blocks were Segwit two X blocks, right? Exactly. <laughs> so this is this is what we watch, right? And when that whole thing fills up, when it goes to the bottom, then we'll get an accurate number in the one thousand. So that's this is a thousand blocks that we're looking at right now. Oh, you're doing low carbs. So. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so that's a thousand blocks that we're looking at total right now, um, and, and it's it shows you the client. Now keep in mind that's not the actual client. It's 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 just uh, uh <clears throat> it's what they report themselves as. So you have no idea what they're actually running. But um, so core non EC. So that that means they're either saying they're running Bitcoin Core, or they don't believe in emerging consensus. <laughs> The emerging consensus of the green ones, and both of them, as you can see, a healthy mix of both of them support Segwit 2x, which is cool. Yeah. So now scroll down a little bit and show the individual blocks. So here you go. So that's the last block, mine by Ant Pool, and you can see the Coinbase text in there, right? And in there, see it says NYA right there. Mine yep. by Ant Pool, BJ15 EB86 NYA, New York Agreement. 
Yeah, and so that's, that's awesome they're because they're actually using um, English characters when they actually use a lot of Chinese otherwise, yep. right? So yeah, yeah, that's that's the text. How come these last two don't have NYA? Uh, because they don't, they don't, they don't support it. Yeah, but the, where the last two? Hold on. Wait a minute, I'm confused. It, these these last thousand blocks then aren't up to date. So because these last two um, say that they're signaling Segwit two X. Well, look, look at him. Look at it down there. See, see if you can see it. Well, what's the number? Which one? No, no. See, look. It's all, it'll tell you. Right. Block four seven two six two zero, four seven two six two zero. NYA. Where's it's NYA? You don't see it? Oh, <laughs> I see it. Yeah, I see it now. <laughs> I was looking for it at the end, like this guy. Well, first no, they're yeah. cussing you out in Chinese, and then they're saying NYA. And yeah, then they, they do more cussing <laughs> out. Oh yeah, no, they use like that's the thing is if you follow this occasionally, you'll see some just messed up shit. Oh, I know, that they say. I know, I do it all the time. <laughs> wait, wait, really? I yeah, in, oh yeah. I want to. You see. can put whatever you want. It's literally there. just like it's your it's your spam. Text. You can just you shout can just the like, n word the actually, whole time if you want. Well, no, no. Somebody did something funny. Somebody did like a mind block, like Rick Roll or something. Who was that? I, never, I was, never gonna give you up. Yeah, <laughs> it was never gonna give you up, and it blocks. It was, you know they do all sorts of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> It's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, because literally they can put whatever they want in there arbitrarily. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I disagree with Coin Dance here because they should be printing the UTF-8 version of that of that uh, bind of that code. See, look at that. I dare them. <laughs> wait, wait. What do you mean? Where? The, see the. Um, you mean like the, the Coinbase? Turn? The the Coinbase's text? Yeah, that is actual con. There's con. You know what do they what do they call the characters? Oh, kanji characters. Well, not, that's not kanji. There, there's character. a fish right here. Yeah, but there's there's characters. <laughs> that's just what it parses out to, I guess. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of fish. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's right. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's Unicode. Look at the look. They got Unicode errors yeah. in there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they shouldn't be doing that. They should be printing the right thing. So. Yeah. Well, it's it's whatever. I mean, it's an encoding issue, but at least you can see the data a that, lot that of comes fish. out as it's encoded and. Well, it, it, remember, it also might be my browser and my computer. So no, it's not your browser. It's just them. That's what they do. All right. But it's it's cool though. I mean, this is still by far the far and away, I would say, the best resource for looking at this stuff. You know, they they've got uh, all kinds of charts and graphs. Are you surprised at what happened with this? No, I'm not. Honestly, I mean, uh, well, I, I'll tell you, I I've been really surprised because usually when people say, "Yeah, we have 99 percent support," and then you go to Coin Dance and it's just like tw- it went from 20 to 25 percent. Because the whole thing with SegWit activation is everyone, like Adam Back thought it was going to be going to like 95%. I've never, I've never heard, okay, so I've heard very vocal people on both sides say absolutely not, hell no, but I've never heard a miner say that. <laughs> you know, no, no, no you know, I, I never heard a miner be like, no, this no, won't I, work ever, you know. I'm going to talk to people this week about SegWit 2X at the uh, Atlanta blockchain meetup, and what I'm going to tell them is this whole thing is about the miners wanting to get rid of Blockstream and all of their core devs. That's the only issue that they want. People like Jihan, I've, he's told me himself that all he wants is to get rid of those people. He hates Greg Maxwell and his crew with a passion. So this, he wants to get I rid would of those say, people. I would argue, though, this doesn't get rid of them. But no, it what doesn't. It does, what it does is it installs a buffer. It proves that there, there is a buffer layer in between them now. They can't submit code and directly expect it to be executed. Right. It's, there is a there is a gatekeeper layer now between the core developers and the miners to where you know the, the, they don't have to accept it in the exact form they're given. Right, and that's that's the key differentiator because basically when you look at Segwit two X, it is one hundred percent the Segwit code with a minor modification. Say, oh yeah, also you have to have block sizes. <laughs> so exactly. that's it. But I mean, it's like so so that if the miners do that, that that doesn't mean they're gone. It just means they don't have total and complete control. Yes, but what it took to get this done is to give it to Jeff Garzik and, you know, to a lesser extent, myself and Jeff and Justin and say, we don't like these guys. Give it to these guys to have them give it to us. Because we, you know what I mean? It's it's almost like a childish thing. It's like, well, see, you know, <laughs> now now it's going to be weird because you're going to get into some sort of weird gotcha arms race where they try to slip stuff past. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. It's so be what weird. we're what we're wondering now is if Core is actually going to merge the hard fork. I back doubt in. that. I highly doubt that. Well, then that. they're done. They're completely done. Well, no. See, that's the thing is okay. Well, they can release it into Core, but see, well, I think what they're they're 
probably going to bet on is if they enable new features and they do that, these new features that you don't have, you have to you know grab their code because really you're running their SegWit code, right? It's it's exactly the code that they wrote. You just take it and add little things to it, right? Right, right. It's not like you rewrote SegWit from scratch, you know? No, it's but like, if they don't merge that hard fork code, how mm-hmm. are they? How who's going to be running code without the run, hard fork in it? Well, they can run a parallel repo, put it out, and then just you know, so no, nobody will run it. Yeah, <laughs> but, but 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 on principle, well, why, at what point? The purpose gonna... is they'll do it on principle. I, I don't mean, think so. I, I don't know. I, you know, and they they may they may not. Well, I guarantee you, Luke Junior ain't gonna. <laughs> Luke well, Dash Junior would change proof of work and then move on. That's what he would do. Oh yeah, well that's that that may still happen with him, but <laughs> well, I mean. It, what do you think is going to happen? They better they better not take the word Bitcoin with it if they change no. if so, they change I mean, off SHA two fifty six. I I no. honestly I honestly hope they do merge it in. I honestly hope they do. Yeah, but that's I don't, the best course of action. So for them. so here's the thing. Yeah, here's having the, thing. the really smart people like Greg Maxwell and Luke Dash Jr. still be able to do what they you know now, do the, I think, do what they do. What I, think, I think Peter Will is smart enough to do it. I think they have something that they've been saving up their sleeve that is going to be a must have feature. That they're going to try to get pushed through, right? And and um, and it'll, you know, they'll try to bundle it with the fact that, you know, it, it, they'll release a version that's a fork because <laughs> yeah. you know, that'll compete right. with your hard fork. Yep. And that'll happen. And you can either have the awesome, you know, uh, you know, you can either have the lame, you know, two X block size version, or the super awesome feature X that we just came out with that's not in that one, and then it'll be their choice that you know, like a Sophie's choice they'll try to make. So, so what? <laughs> what would, so what you'll have to Wait do? Wait a minute. Like would your they? Team, wouldn't they do that? Shouldn't they do that before? No, they they would do it as late as possible. <laughs> they would do it like the day before. The day before it's supposed to fork, so you don't want to go with that fork. You want to go with this fork, you know. Well, why would they? Why would they wait till that? I mean, everybody's already upgraded at that point. Well, I mean, they would want to release it because I mean, it's kind of like the whole user aspect. They would want to, and it, ideally, it should be something that's very appealing to miners, and they try to peel away some of the miners. That's what they. That's what they would do if I were them. Right. Yeah. You know, is make a happening. super miner, you know, friendly. Feature. I see that happening right after Segwit activates. Well, I mean. The, well, I think if well, devil's advocate here, for timing purposes, you want it as close to the hard fork as possible. That gives you enough time to uh, to properly uh, market it. You know what I mean? So, like, say a week before the hard fork is when you drop it. So enough time to market it, but not enough time for you to merge and test. That's what, you know oh, what I mean? Because you could scab you you know anything they make, it's open source. You could literally take it, and be like, okay, we're doing well, that maybe, too. Maybe done. Maybe not. Maybe well, not. yeah, it depends on how they do it, and if yeah. it's been. But that's the thing. Is depending on the lead time that they could slip stuff in, knowing that you don't have enough time to audit it in order to. Get, you know? Well, the conspiracy says that Segwit is that Trojan horse. Well, you know what I mean. You know? I like to think it's been vetted by now. To it you hasn't. know, it hasn't. Well, that's scary. Where has it been say. vetted? We, you and I, talked about this all the time. Pretty much, Litecoin is the only place that, and they don't use it on like. There's nothing going on Litecoin. No, but you're saying like where has it been vetted? I would say that's like really the, if you want to have any kind of valued chain well, that, that's running seg. How many source, segwit transactions open are? Open source code is open, but it doesn't mean every line has been audited to the degree to where you know it won't produce unexpected results intentionally. <laughs> you I can mean, never know. I'm that. not. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that they did stick a trojan in, but they could have, and you know, it's a lot of code, right? Right. <laughs> when you're defining op true and now op true doesn't mean true it means something different to but whether see, or not what, honestly though depending on what code you're running. i'm i'm less worried about that because if it becomes apparent something did well if you're going to hard fork anyway <laughs> you know you can change it right yeah if, if 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 it's soft fork soft forks only and that makes it in there you're screwed right because you you know if you're only ever doing soft well, here's forks, a question to you if someone's able to steal a SegWit transaction in that hard fork, do you also reverse that? Because they were the guinea pig to find the fault in the first place. Well, I mean, it, it depends. There's, there's a question to you. Well, it depends because you don't have to entirely reverse SegWit. You know what I mean? You can just take out the Trojan if you find it. You know what I mean? If there's, if there's something in there that they slipped. I mean, and I'm not saying they did. I honestly don't think they did. You know, but if it becomes apparent... That first, you know, oh wow, now it does this unexpected feature, you know. Um, 
then if that were the case, if you're doing a hard fork anyway, you can hard fork to remove that, which you couldn't do if it was a soft fork, right? Because you you have to right. lessen the scope of the rule or tighten the scope of the rules. Yeah, Jeff Garzik had a really good talk in Amsterdam recently at Bitcoin Bitcoin Wednesday, their uh, YouTube channel, um, at the uh, Amsterdam meetup. And he talked about how insidious soft forks are and how they're they're essentially a way for an elite few to make changes, to make economic uh, changes to the Bitcoin protocol. It, you know, that's what I don't like is it literally <laughs> forces everybody. There is no opt out to a soft no fork. You out. cannot opt out. There's you only cannot a- opt out. You can run your old code, but the network you're running on, even though your machine's code doesn't, the network you connect to now has fundamentally different characteristics right. than it did before. So you're basically, with the help of the miners, of course, you can have collusion between a very small number of people uh, to fundamentally change Bitcoin, well, and there's nothing anybody else can do about this it. This is nothing new, though. This is what Mike Hearn was saying yeah. years ago. Yeah. And, yeah, and I, I've always kind of agreed. Soft work only is, to me, bullshit. It's a, it's insidious, and, um, you and need, they're playing you it off like it's to, this only safe way to do things, which when you, is not when you, true. Well, no, I mean, Monero's evidence of that. They, they hard fork every six months. Right. They haven't crashed and burned and died or any anything of the sort. Interesting. So... Yeah, because this, I mean, I automatically think back uh, from Jay with BitDevs, right? Who's never hard fork if you don't need to, always soft fork. I, I, I've never been of that persuasion, honestly. I mean, I, I think, I think, and Gavin tried to do this back in the day, is he wanted to set up a regular cycle hard fork, even right. before Monero was doing it. Yeah. And he's saying we should hard fork every six months or whatever he said. Yeah. And then you clear because, out all those old clients. Because it's like, be- oh, well, here's all these things. We could either hack Kluge forever, try to get it to work, or we could just say, no, that's the way it is now. <laughs> <laughs> well, so they're, they're very hypocritical, they being like the core devs saying that only soft forks are appropriate. Because at and one one hand, they say, we, we, need as, we need a homogeneous network. We need only Bitcoin core that we produce on the network. It's too dangerous to leave this to the... only you to the, can't you know, have multiple clients. We can't you know. have multiple clients. But at the same time, they say, oh, we only got to do soft forks because, you know, that's the safest way to do it. Well, you're creating... You're creating the very thing that you you say you don't want. You're creating a heterogeneous network. It's a yeah, people it's, are running like 0. .07, which is like from 2012, on on the same network. That right, you've got you have point, multiple you versions know, versions running on. That's it, a heterogeneous yeah. network. Now I understand that 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 Bitcoin D is the stuff that was produced in, under the same, I guess, batch of people. Maybe uh, not really, but similar. So they're being very hypocritical when they say things like soft forks are the only things we should be doing. I, I think maybe I'll play devil's advocate. A money if, if you're going to make a robust money system, I shouldn't have to worry about you know a hard fork changing stuff over and then maybe... I don't well, know. yeah, but you shouldn't worry about a soft fork changing stuff over either because that's the problem yeah. is a soft fork, whether or not it doesn't affect the computer, the machine, the code that's running on your machine. What it does is it affects the network you connect to. So it limits what the code on your machine is able to do on that network. Right. It's more insidious even. It's it's not... And you you um, didn't agree to that change. That's the big you thing. You didn't agree to you that change. You didn't agree to that change. And I didn't agree to that change at all. And your funds could be unspendable yeah. depending on what the change was. Sorry. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they could so, soft fork to render it. Yeah. So, I mean, your your funds could be unspendable you, after you can, a hard fork. No, yeah, but you... Right. No, but at least, no, at no least, you have uh, one chain... You have one chain where they're still spendable on a hard fork. Yeah, that's true. You, you do have the old chain. So, okay, so that's the thing is in a hard fork, you have the possibility of retaining the old chain. Might not have any hash power. It might be worthless. That's, but you that's can an run interesting that, point. Like Luke Jr. is going to be yeah. doing. You could run, you you could run, run that, that old chain forever mine, on your own goddamn. You could mine on that chain too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you could do it. Yeah. But I mean. I mean, if you really like that version, you can. Well, see, yeah, that's the thing is you can do that with a hard fork. That's your option. With your soft fork, you can't do that. I mean, you can continue to run your version, but the network you're on no longer supports that. You could, but directly. you'd have to hard fork yourself. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and don't ever fork yourself. <laughs> so there's a lot of... Um, uh, the, the the misinformation campaign is just insane, you know? With saying, we, we can't... It's too dangerous. So people are going to, you know, they're going to hard well, fork off the network. How many it's people like, actually talk about this stuff and actually are technical, though? Because those people are so passionate about talking about these very technical yeah. points. Well, yeah, right? you and hear Jeff, the same thing out of the, the core developers, That's why too. I mentioned Jeff Garzik. He lays this out and says, look, here's the deal with this. And he's as technical as it comes. So 
if you take a deep dive into these issues, you find out that you're being sold a bill of goods and it's all propaganda. Right. I, I, I'd be inclined to agree with the statement, but I mean, that's just, that's the way I've always seen this issue. Hard fork versus soft fork. Soft forks, I, I see it the other way around. Soft forks are great if you can get away with them, but if it's something important, it should be a hard fork. You know? Soft forks are great when they're not economic. They don't Exactly. If they don't impact economics. If they're, if it's a trivial soft fork that's like, not going to um, impact the way the network operates. Yeah, like check. It's not going to change. Verify. Not going to change incentives. That's the biggest, that's my delimiter. If it does not in change incentives economic incentives to operate on the network softworks are fine right yeah like check sequence verify it didn't really affect any economics right no. it, it just added new functionality exactly and um and that's there's no reason a hard fork for that right so you know if you had no you, you i mean know. there's there's no reason to something like that there isn't there you know the other the other thing would be technical complexity and that's the other the other argument about segwit i mean gavin said it at first he said he said, yeah, because they came out with the idea. They said, oh, here's the And Gavin said, like, the very next day, he read the proposal. He's like, yeah, that's great. Let's do it as a hard fork. You know, like, the next day. Yeah. And he's like, because, honestly, because, yeah, you just do it, clean fork. You no longer have two transaction types with SegWit because you don't have old traditional legacy transactions and SegWit transactions. There's just transactions, and they're all SegWit if you do a right. hard fork. Right, but um, SegWit is a little bit weird because now you have to retrofit the rest of the network, all the other things like wallets and block explorers. And, mm -hmm. you know, you have to retrofit all that, which is incredibly intensive, right? Yeah. So, so, so I mean, if you did a hard fork, that would be a severe issue, huh? Either way, soft or hard fork, you still have to retrofit everything. Right. But I mean, the difference is with the soft fork, you do the one advantage, the benefit of a soft fork is you can retain legacy as long as you want to upgrade that. That is a benefit, I would say. Because, you know, you can keep running your old shit until you get around to upgrading. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great stuff. Oh, I forgot to talk. Um, I was looking through my uh, tweet history. Um, I, I wanted to bring this up with one of the ICOs. Apparently, Bancor was 40 lines of code. Did, is, that, is that the smart contract? Is that what that is? I think. They lines? did 40 lines of code for and, Bancor. And it's a $144 million or 144 million dollars got invested into it and that's literally all they have right now as far as like r real stuff besides like maybe the relationships they have that's and stuff. almost as big as the dow <laughs> yeah and that was like yeah it's like the dow is happening every other day now with, with ethereum but uh these things grow at exponential rates <laughs> until they don't but <laughs> so are you Here, here's uh, a, here's another thing that w was coming up you brought up uh or maybe maybe it was a uh, pay to script hash. Was pay to script hash a soft fork, right? Yeah, yeah. actually it was. Yeah, and uh, sixteen. Well, well, did, does that change the economics potentially? No, I don't think it should have been done as a soft fork either. Although is it was from Gavin, so <laughs> Gavin was really pumping that thing. I kind of disappointed, but it it is what it is. I, well, so you know, ironically, if if he had done it as a hard fork and just said we're going to hard fork, <laughs> he would have set precedent, and we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Maybe maybe we wouldn't be entertaining any more. We'd just forks. be like, no, hard fork. You know, we've done it before. We did it with pay to script. <laughs> yeah, how hard is it to download some software and start running it? Just, some miners get your shit together. Download on time. <laughs> so, any anyways. Uh, my, my, my. Well, uh, ironically, though, I will say this. Ironically, I think it was a lot harder, or, or you know, back when miners were individuals, because literally you just had a guy running his machine who is like, I'm making money, and then he just goes off, leaving it running in the background, right? Yeah. And so it was a lot harder to corral them versus the professional. Now there's pools, so there's only like 20 guys that you have to talk to in order to, More to or get less, shit yeah. together. Yeah, yeah make so. sure that you got like 90%. In, in, in all fairness, in those days, it was probably a lot harder to hard for than it would be now. But what were you saying? No, I mean, you bring up a good point. Like, you can easily get 90% of the, of the Bitcoin miners well, I mean, on... But, on but with those miners, the, the the hard fork just means uh, at if, least let them know if, what's going if, on. Well, that's yeah. why well, that's why they had the system, the alert system that was disabled. They had an alert system that says, "Hey, you're out of date. You need to upgrade." Right? Yeah, they got rid of that. They got rid of that. Core did as as you know part of this whole deal. They got rid of the alert system. Why? Why did they do that? Conspiracy. Uh, well, it's the well, no, no. They they did that. Because it's it's this whole same whole deal with the, the soft fork only mentality. Well, they there's hate, no they reason hate freedom. There's they no hate America. Uh, they probably there's hate, no reason. They probably hate puppies. Another thing, Gavin had a key. 
They can't, they booted Gavin out. He didn't, you know, he had a key to that. They can't revoke the key. So they just disabled the feature, right? Oh, is that really what, is that really Satoshi why? Satoshi had a key? Hold on. Satoshi had a key? Guess who else has a key? Thamos had a key? Gavin. <laughs> and Gavin. I don't know who else. I don't know if Mark had a key. I think Mark Capellas may have had a key, actually. Wait, are you? <laughs> I think he did, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, uh, so, so all these people had keys to the alert system, and they just disabled the alert system. But but if you think about it, on a hard fork scenario of that guy, it's only the people, only the miners who are not paying attention who are going to be on the wrong chain. And anybody who's paying attention, you know what I mean? And they see the hard fork happening. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> well, that, which, I mean, that's as long why as that's over the majority. It's going to outpace well, the other chain. And yeah. well, that's why it's good, actually, that Monero is doing it on a schedule. Right. Every- because it gets the miners used to up. Oh, well, no, upgrade. I mean, yeah, yeah like, like, but they know when it's going to happen mm-hmm. ahead of time. Right. Yep. That's interesting. All right. Yeah. But I mean, you'll still, even if you did have scheduled upgrades, you'd still run into political football issues because, you know, they'd try to slip it's something gonna in. It's going to be like half the people would say, Mike, no, fuck that. Mike, <laughs> Mike, it's going to be like, uh, speaking of political football and all that stuff, it, it would remind me of like raising the debt ceiling or whatever. Yeah. Or, you know, like when they're doing turn the budget. Into one of those. It's like, we don't have, we don't have funding for, for the government. We have to brinksmanship. You know, it, that's what it would boil down to. Is you you'll and it probably will if we establish a hard fork schedule, which I kind of hope we do. But it'll yeah, it'll, it'll end up as brinksmanship. You know <laughs> what right. makes it in the fork or not. But I mean, politics is unavoidable in any system of complexity. If you have a system over n complexity, you know if there's more than two people involved, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> politics and, is inevitable. You and I have talked about. Yeah. I think the ultimate. Uh, the ultimate um, governance model is just to simply have a benign AI, right? And yeah, just well, I mean, AI I just, mean that may be the eventual one, <laughs> you know. And using the term benign AI may be like kind of oxymoronic, but it's, yeah, you know, it's like, well, you know, I mean, and benign or not, that's probably what's going to end up eventually. Like we just <laughs> programmed a computer, and this is makes the decisions. If you have a problem, go take it up with that guy. Isn't isn't that essentially what Ethereum wants to do with everything? Well, it's not really a computer in Ethereum. I mean, it, it's a super world computer. What do you right, mean? Right, but it's not making right. It's not making decisions. its own decisions. Like, not yet. Well, okay. No, yes, but but I'm not even. Kidding. We all know thought, Ethereum is Skynet. No, no. So but like, isn't <laughs> isn't that what Ethereum wants to go towards? Isn't that? I mean, I'm not saying they're going to like like realistically, but isn't that what? They I've never want bought to go into the huge grandiose visions. I mean, it could someday evolve into something like that. But I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I I stick on the nearer term horizon for this stuff because honestly, I think. Ethereum and stuff like that is going to get scrapped in favor of something else before yeah. we reach that point. Yeah, well, I think so. You know, it's like, <laughs> like ETC? No, like uh, <laughs> Definity or something like that. Well, and then, then it'll stair step from there, and you know, each one will get about five you'll, years. You'll get or, a really you know? good snarks for somebody like a Monero type of organization, which has extremely talented people, will get, they'll do like a Definity kind of snarks thing where you don't need to be like running code on every, every node. You can just send like witness, uh, Produce around and, and stuff like that and achieve the same thing. Yeah. So we don't need like that's ridiculous. Why would why would well, you? Well, I mean, it? if you think about it, we're we're in the dark ages of this stuff. It's yeah. like just just discovering right now. We've discovered the internal combustion engine and we've slapped it to a rough chassis and a wheel <laughs> and we call it a car. But you know, <laughs> but it's nothing like what I we think, have today. Yeah, I it's think like, we're in the you know steam. Exactly, some, some, some sort of yeah. We've hobbled together something that kind of works. We shovel It'll, coal into yeah. it, it kind of works, but 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 it's not it's not the the end state. It's not the Tesla, right? Where and, we need to be, right? And the question is though. Here's the question: Is is it, are the existing incumbent protocols are they going to evolve or are they not going to evolve fast enough and then they'll be usurped by ones that are you know more technologically I think, advanced i think we're starting to answer the question they're not going to be able to evolve because there's so much money riding in legacy behaviors of these things and there's so much uh things that you know so much strife that holds well, things up that's right? one thing that's actually i thought was was curious about the definity network and the way that it works and the incentive structure of the the neural whatever i mean which is it's, it's very buzzword heavy i don't like yeah. that part about it but if you look at it and you talk about the incentive structure, I think its governance model lends itself more toward evolution. You know what I mean? It does because, you know, and I'm not saying it's perfect or anything, but I, I think if 
if anything existing today can change, it's going to be something like that or like a dash mm-hmm. where we're, I mean. You have a hybrid kind of deal. Yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, again, these are very, very early primitives, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, they're going to look so silly to us in like 20 years. They're going to be like, look what those idiots are doing back then. Or to the robots that have replaced us. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> silly cryptocurrencies. <laughs> Foolish apes. Well, by that time, we'll be, I'll be on a beach being like, I don't care. I'm rich. So, whatever, <laughs> dude. How, uh, Howard Chu, I was talking about the yeah, Monero the Monitor Report. Love that guy. Uh, he was saying that Monero is the only true or one of the only true cryptocurrencies because cryptos or whatever he was like saying like means like, like you don't know what's going on. Like it's cryptic. And with Bitcoin, everything's transparent except like, you know, the. PKI part of it, but uh, uh, then you get into like the meta anyways, language I, aspect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, oh, so so I actually the discussion point. So uh, getting back to the Segwit two X, what is the release schedule again? What are we looking at here? So we're looking at newest update. We're looking at getting everybody's. So the release will happen as soon as uh, we have one outstanding item that we need to to actually implement, and that is what we want to do is the very first block. After, so what it is, is it's 144 blocks times 90. And that's, that's about 90 days worth of blocks. The, the plus one block after that has been decided that that will be, it must be greater than one meg. Okay, so that's so, the schedule for the hard fork. I'm talking about the, the Segwit 2X, the Segwit portion of it. Before we get to the hard fork. Right, so the code. Oh, yeah, what, the code okay, really yeah, well, I was going back to that. Yeah. Once we, once we implement and test that, that little piece, which I think it's already been implemented. We're just um, uh, sort of going over the pull request now. Once that is uh, released, we will actually do a final release of SegWit 2X. We will then, the miners will then immediately start testing it and and when, hopefully get running it next. When's the tentative date? Yeah. We're talking about next week. Next week. Okay, cool. And then uh, immediately after that. So the drop dead date is to have everybody signaling... 80, by 80 percent uh by july 28th or something like that right and then, you know, then after that uh, cause there, there's the three-day grace to or, right. you know yeah so next week is the last week in june mm-hmm. then we have the like the fourth of july week after that so we we've got time and it's going to take uh like 627 blocks to activate segwit mm-hmm. uh, so so say like we activate on the very last day we want to which is like july 28th Right. So 627 blocks is, I don't know, like a week. And then so we go right into the first week in August where we're activated SegWit, we're locked in, and we go active. How much you want to bet Ed Tupel is just going to be a dickhead and be like, oh, sorry, just just flip no, it just for, just for fun. But just for fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just for like a day. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so we're looking at the first week. We'll in do it if you give us Bitcoin. <laughs> Wang Chun. Yeah. So the first week in, in August, we're looking at... 190 days from then okay to to the to the hard fork to the hard fork okay. which is like and, i guess and, okay. first so week going in back november to what you said first so around the first week of november and getting back to what you said before i, I pulled you back again so the hard fork is going to activate and when it does it will not for the first block it will not accept a block that is under one megabyte and then after that that restriction is removed but for right. that first forking block and if uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the reason that it does this is to to create a definitive hard fork that is incompatible with the old network. Yeah, to and get, to get the hard fork. So going. one one fork, one side of the fork will only accept for this block when they split. One side of the fork will only accept one megabyte blocks or under one megabyte blocks, and the other one will only accept over one megabyte blocks for the for the initial block. Correct. So that's 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 handy. I remember reading about that. That's an elegant solution to it to ensure a timely, orderly hard. Who was it who came up with that? That's a great idea. Um, I'm trying to remember who was talking about that. Maybe Sergio. Maybe yeah. not. Maybe I'm giving him credit. I don't know. I, I don't remember know. reading about it on Reddit, and I was like, man, somebody somebody was actually. He's like, oh my god, they actually listened, <laughs> you know, because yeah. some guy who said, hey, you know, but it's it's really true because otherwise, if you didn't have that provision in. You would be in this quasi: Are we forked? Are we not forked? State because yeah. you wouldn't know specifically what the forks are because the blocks would be valid on both sides until it's randomly someone decides to produce a larger than one megabyte block. Right. You know. So then the question is: Well, what if the mempool doesn't support that? 
And so we're going through some of these some of these edge cases. What, and all what do you mean? Well, what if there are not enough transactions to get it to get a one meg? Oh, on that number? block, that's a very important point. So, yeah, what if there's not as I'm sure. I'm oh, sure that would be an interesting attack. Why, why wouldn't? Why wouldn't the? No, why wouldn't one of the supporting miners just flood it? Yeah, with that's a bunch true. Of crap? And that's that's what that's, they have that's to do. That's the fix. That's is is the miner who does the blocks? They can just they can just make it large. They can just pad the shit out of it. That's what they're know? gonna have to do. Yeah, right. So well, they're gonna they have might to be not ready to do have that. to do it, but if well, there's they, enough they, memory, they they do if they want to be on that side of the fork. Right. Well, no. What I'm saying is, they might be able to just get. Enough fee, enough. Uh, oh yeah, you're right. You're right. In the if there's enough transactions, they don't have to do it. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. can just grab. Yeah, uh, you're exactly right. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of the mempool, it ha- has it gone down or what? Oh, it's way oh, low. It is. Let's we were look. just talking about that before the before the podcast started. So so yeah, and of course there's the the conspiracy theory on the other side that that somebody has been spamming it this entire time to make it appear as though there's a crisis with the well, mempool side. And then we were saying that the only economical way to do that over a long period of time is for miners to collude with each other to do this. Correct. Yeah. Well, that's true. Well, because they're the only ones that would be able to get away with that and be able to. <laughs> To to afford because we're minor talking- collusion's bad, but I mean, if you think about it, in this case, to do the hard fork, we have ninety percent of miners <laughs> who are who are in favor of the schema, and 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 the core developers would not let them do this until you know. That's that's really interesting. So, in other words, uh, in other words, they would they would pay back the the transaction fees from themselves, but then yeah. force other people to pay high transaction fees. Yeah, and and. Yeah. So the only thing that can hold people like that accountable are mining pools that just take all the fees and say, "Ah, screw you guys! I'm taking all the fees." Right? Yeah. So, right. So, so yeah. So this is it is it is weird that this is like because I looked at the mempool and I was like, I looked at it was like seventy two hundred and I was like, wait. So I thought on. it was seventy seven hundred and I was. Hold you know, on. Let Let me share this with everybody. This is a. Uh, this is a. I was like, that can't chart. be right. I was like, something's wrong with my node. It's like only seven thousand yeah, transactions. It, it dropped. Wow, that is precipitous. Yeah, yeah, that's that's huge. That's that's a crash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Bitcoin a Bitcoin crash. That's a, that's a crash. Bitcoin mid-roll. crashed. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, what's, uh, what's the mining? So case? literally, we only have what eight thousand transactions in mempool at we, this point. You should, yeah, we should uh, sweep. Like, like if the fees are Go, down, we should look sweep. at trade. Seven, look at trade block. Pull up trade block. Uh, what is that a website? Yeah, yeah. Trade block. And trade block's to, awesome. You've to, never seen it. Go to no, slash. like that. Yeah, like that. And yeah, yep. And then look at Bitcoin because they also track Ethereum now. There's there's like a live. Yeah, like Ethereum. a live. So Bitcoin of the top, and then live, and it shows you the blocks as they come in and the mempool. So those are each of the blocks there, and then the current one on the right is oh, the mempool. Oh, cool. I didn't even know about this website. You know who showed me this at first? Because this is actually James. this is just is James. James, I James, knew it. James. I guessed yeah, right. Yeah. I guessed right. I was like, oh, "What's that?" <laughs> but this is actually run by uh, Silbert's outfit too. Uh, Genesis, Mister Barry, and Barry Silbert. Yep, they're the it's the same. They're using the, they're using the Unicode logo. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, so you can see over the where's right. Where's the mempool? Is, over the right. The right. You can see in the, to in the, the right. blue. It's the blue. like it's like what. It's probably eighty four hundred. The something. top right. So see the blocks. See the actual like physical. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> and then it shows that's the, the amount. mempool. But but think about it. In when, we, it, when we had two hundred fifty thousand transactions, that kind of when we at the height of that, the the fees that were generated were in the four and five Bitcoin amounts per block. Yeah, we're talking about major fees. And I mean, through. yeah. And, and if you if you're if you're talking about. Um, you know, in, in this is early now, but I mean that's that's getting awful close to the subsidy. <laughs> you know, I mean it's where we're at what twelve and a half right now, yeah. right? So that's getting damn close to you know being a significant portion of the subsidy just in fees. Right. And but but uh, so so the key here is is if that is the case, if they if they were colluding, they weren't colluding to drive up fees. They were colluding to increase the block size, which would ironically make this sort of attack much more difficult to pull off because they would have to do it with much, much larger volumes if it right. is an attack. I right. Mean, Plus, they're probably cannibalizing their own business because people yeah. are leaving Bitcoin to go to Litecoin or whatever yeah. it well, is, right? So would you say, yeah, I mean, would you say like Ethereum probably took a lot of back pressure off of... I'm sure it did. I mean, just all yeah. that money flowing into Ethereum, you know... 
<laughs> I, well, think about it. now. Usually, what was it? You take Bitcoin to invest in this other blockchain. Now it's everything is Ethereum into something else. Ethereum into this ICO. Ethereum into this ICO. So it's it's taken a li- away a lot of those Bitcoin transactions as well. I'm sure. Oh yeah, maybe too. When, when you're when you're, I mean, because think about it, the the big speculative thing was you buy Bitcoin and then you exchange your Bitcoin for something else. Well, really, when now they you're do just that, exchanging really, Ether for some unless other you type use of like Ether Shapeshift token. and and you do it on exchange. If you do it on exchange, when you go to Poloniex or something, you're not really doing transactions. You're doing a transaction to deposit it, but then they're just changing their accounting system in the back, and they're not actually doing any transactions for anything until you actually do a withdrawal. Yeah, they're, but that's that's. I mean, everything's a percentage so let's say 50 percent or 80 percent or whatever of those transactions are like what you're talking about sure right yeah yeah there's still but, a, i mean there's, cer- there's a still percentage the de- there's still a deposit transaction yeah. and a withdrawal transaction and yeah, yeah. And, a, and you know a lot of people are gonna withdraw and, and then there's and, also but oh, not I, all of them said well i owe you 20 bucks well, what am i gonna pay you in if we both oh, I use <laughs> I mean, uh, hypothetically. You got me excited there for a second. Hypothetically. <laughs> so, uh, what, 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 you know, if we both we both deal in Ethereum and we both deal in Bitcoin, and I say, well, I could pay you a three dollar fee, or or you could pay you like a two cent fee, or you know, pay for for the fee in order to send you this twenty dollars. Uh, is it okay? Is it okay by you if I just send you Ethereum? You know. Well, I mean, that's why. I mean, that's why I told Gino. I told him, hey, man. I mean, we're going. You're going. I'm. I'm not. I. I didn't pay in Bitcoin for my haircut because of the fee. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, last it's, week. It's funny because it totally negates. Because he gives a ten percent discount, and, and the fee totally the fee, negates so, that. So the fee was five dollars. Yeah, the fee was five dollars. You're talking so, about what so it was, pretty much a that nice was, haircut. So it's like a forty five dollar whatever haircut, right? With a shave and no, all it was, no, no. I don't have any facial hair. Does Mike. he do? You don't get the does, shave. Does he do straight razor? Yeah. Oh, oh man, I gotta razor. go there. I've never it's, had that. It's done. really cool. Oh, it's it's, it's so, nice. So, Mike, my haircuts <laughs> are like twenty bucks. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't have hair everywhere on me. I don't get my back shaved when I'm there like you. <laughs> I know. I know you pay I'm the not fifty dollars. <laughs> you, you got a hair suit. I'm not that hairy. <laughs> anyway, um, so so yeah, no, that's the point. Is you know the the transaction fees had gotten ridiculous, and this is in my opinion just a preview of what what would happen if we leave it like that. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see it looks like Segway 2X is going to go through. Um, well, I mean, by the time we get two megabyte blocks, Core is going to start saying, what is their argument going to be? We don't need them. Yeah, we, we, don't need, we don't need these bigger blocks. Well, of course right? they're going to be like... Are they going to say that? Or, or absolutely. No? When, once Segway uh, activates, they're going to be like, whoa, wh- why so hasty? Why so hasty? So, Why don't we so wait eighteen months and what do you, we can what, decide then? What do you think? Yeah, of course. <laughs> but but yeah. well, no, no. What do you think uh, the odds are that they will have a solution by the time uh, the two X portion activates or is supposed to activate for Schnorr signatures? Hundred percent. So they'll have Schnorr ready. No, I, think, I don't no, know. No. I don't. I can't speak to that. But okay, yeah, like, but I'm saying, I'm say saying like, they'll have a bomb to drop. I they'll have zero point one four point three just queued up and ready to go right after. Segment, right, but segment, it, but it's going to be worthless unless they have like a, for lack of better words, like a killer app. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let me let me ask you your opinion about this from Yacoin Ben, whoever that guy is. Uh, I'll share it with right here, but pretty much uh, this this goes back. I don't, don't want to forget about this. He was pretty much saying, uh, he was responding to this. We're, we're talking about the pay to script hash. Any how you rule can, can be changed by a hard fork. You can make the block reward 150 BTC. None of the economy would follow, which is true if you up the block reward and screw well, with the, the emission the, schedule. The original, the original tweet was this. I disagree with Greg Red about Segwit. The exact same risk could be added to exist with pay to script hash. Neither can be exploited with a 51% attack. Okay. Uh, essentially, it's trying to compare. In my opinion, page script hash with right. So Andreas is taking he's stuff. like taking the uh, counter argument to me. I actually so kind of there, ironically I agree with Craig Wright in this respect, but there, there but, actually, I but essentially that, but. <laughs> I was going to ask you a question, John Light. Why haven't page script hash coins been stolen yet? My response: hard to compare. I would say the category to compare is contentiousness. Scaling debate has been most all right. Blah blah. You were exactly right. Yeah. Um, so page script taps are overwhelmingly adopted by miners anyways and, and they could steal from pay to script hash users well, see, c- if they come, didn't do come that now segwit will be like overwhelmingly you know by miners right 
do you, yeah. do you, do you, but do you agree? Yeah. Like as far as we're talking about like economic stuff, it's all about like the, the real category to compare is contentiousness. Exactly. You're yeah. exactly okay. right. Yeah. Right. I was just well, curious if, what if y'all you, See, that's on the that thing. Was. That's the thing is if you have enough people that would follow you, because anybody at any time can fork off and spend something like that because it's it's not valid on on the old like it's an anyone can spend to the the old chain, right? So anyone can do that at any time. The question is is anybody going to follow? If the change wasn't contentious, nobody's going to follow. So the reason seg- the reason the soft fork is really insidious in this in this case is because you are not giving the option for people not to follow, right? You are exactly. implicitly saying you have to abide you have, th- to, you have to abide by these rules whether you opt in or not. Yeah. yeah. And you can be low information per uh, user and you could just not know about this and and totally get screwed. So um yeah, there's no reason to do a soft work, in my opinion, unless it's so basic, like like you're adding an op, you know, you're changing an op code to do something that has nothing to do with economics or something, you know. So so let's let's talk about the the actual hard fork portion of Segwit two X, and we've gone over the timing, but I don't know where are we at now with what's actually physically going to be changed in the code. I know it's not like. 100 percent locked right. up with release candidate but i know we got a couple factors here now we we have um so we have the the actual uh we addressed it a little bit but if you could go over again okay uh the um the actual uh, implementation effective date the logic behind that right and then of course the uh block max block size variable right that's still a variable even after segway right it yeah. still exists and then the max block height or block weight, sorry, block weight. Yeah, that's not changing to. Let's see, it's not changing, so it should be for. So for, block weight. This isn't. This is in Segwit now, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're okay. So 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 the first we have the okay. What are the parameters for activation? You said ni- ninety days. Well, in blocks. Ninety times one forty four right. blocks. Whatever that 90 is. Ninety days in blocks. Um, <clears throat> after. After the and, and that's that's hard. That's after Segwit is so uh, in the active phase. So the agreement, phase. the agreement, the letter of the agreement said no later than six months is what the right. New York agreement said. So we yep. are going with ninety days, which yep. roughly three roughly months. three months. Okay, yep. right. And in that the that's going to be what it's actually coded at. That's decided now. And that's halfway between the people that want you know the moment after we activate Segwit or at the same time as Segwit and the maximum of 6 months. Okay. What the difference? Cool. So there's, so there's that. And then so the second one now, obviously we have to up the max block size. Uh what is that getting up to? 2 2 meg. 2 meg. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's just okay. And then you're saying the well, original I should I should uh quantify that. It's not it's 2 2 megabytes which is uh 2 million bytes. Mm-hmm. It's not It's not not an actual yeah. megabyte. It's literally yeah. 2 million bytes. 2 million bytes, yeah. Yeah, that's always messed with me anytime I've ever actually looked at a hard drive. <laughs> it's like <laughs> what do you mean it's you know no. Um yeah, okay. And then then you know, have to allocate to the you know, the uh, Yeah, but yeah. the majority <laughs> of the pat the patch is very thin. All it does is it puts some uh, some new logic in connect block, which is in the validation.cpp. Mm-hmm. And it just uh, asserts that, hey, we've got this new bit in version bits, and we're going to check to see if, uh, to see if this code, if Segway is You want to look active. at the code? No, we, well, we can, but... No, nah, let's I'm save that to, for next week. What I'm trying to do is let's get let's across do that the people next week. that... Let's do that. Do, is that cool? Next week, we'll actually look yeah, at the Yeah, we'll code. look at the patch. We'll sure. do that next we'll, week. We'll leave no. them hungry. Yeah, Wait let's look more. at. Stay I think tuned. I think every <laughs> every if you're going to do a hard fork and you're going to make and you're you're affecting a forty four billion dollar project. Yeah, people ought to know like what is in this thing, right? So cool. uh, I, I, I would hate to break it to you, but I'm sure a lot of people don't care. They should care. I guarantee you, they're only like literally two percent actually want to look at the what but that, those why are do, our why viewers do you, hey why do you think our viewership is so low <laughs> okay the, we talk about actual technical issues we actually talk about this stuff yeah <laughs> we, yeah, we talk we about the format of the protocol yeah and we don't talk about we don't spread fear uncertainty and doubt like some other people do yeah so if, if I, you, I did i did want to talk about one thing from uh btc1 slash bitcoin what's that uh, disabling like AC no, no 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 you remember how you said uh Greg Maxwell and Garzik and Hoffman are like making uh, this into like a Reddit post. Yeah, like who's, they, who, like, who's Hoffman though? Dude, Brian Hoffman, Ob One. Oh, oh, hey, oh, Brian, oh, okay. Brian, sorry. I know you watched this. So sorry. Oh wait, 
I, 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 I didn't know which Hoffman you're talking about. I know, I know, doesn't, doesn't I know Brian in. watches us. Shout out to Open Bazaar, Obi One, the company that. Yeah, he's been so, great. Like I talked to him on the, the company that I might use again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, I I I uh, have to say that uh, I'm very happy getting to know people like Mike Belshi and Ho- Brian this guy Hoffman. Uh, Mike Belshi, that's yeah. uh, the CEO of uh, Bitco. Uh, Bitco yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, I, I thought I, I was reading through this, and there's like a bunch of people cussing and yeah, arguing. Oh, this was on the GitHub BTC one. I didn't get as Here. far in that as I wanted to, yeah. but it turned into quite the troll fest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right and like, everybody's calling out jeff fuck saying, this shit <laughs> <laughs> what does it say who's who said that he's quoting who said that fuck this shit i'm out <laughs> yeah no it's just funny like to see this in github yeah in like github hack <laughs> fuck you like like imagine like you're working i don't know like i don't know imagine you're working somewhere and this is like this is part of work you know i mean this is interesting yeah. i don't know it's like a soap opera. In I like I like how there's so many thumbs up and thumbs down to a freaking GitHub. Like when I think of GitHub, I'm thinking like this is what I do for work, and I keep you know, I'm looking at like private repos all day, and like these guys are like in public, like having fun. I'm like, oh shit, like this is like it's just funny to see this. I know like, it's hilarious. Like, <laughs> it's this like, is open. like I'm like imagining like people at my job, like you know how like ninety percent of like your commits are probably like on private repos or whatever. No, public. Or oh, you, you work for BitPay? I forgot. Yeah. Uh, well, anyways, most people that are, are doing stuff with GitHub are probably, you know, for their job or I don't even know what the percentage is. But, like, to, to imagine, like, my coworkers, like, upvoting and down, <laughs> downvoting this stuff and, like, saying, like, oh, fuck this. And no, this just, is good because this means people care and they get in there and they look at what you're doing and they they may call you an idiot. But if they have constructive criticism, then let's let's look at that. I will say Greg seemed to be asking good questions and it was other people that were... There's Saying JJ. Crazy there's JJ stuff. right there. Christopher Jeffries right there. Yeah, the man himself. Oh, right here. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, um, I, I I was I was skimming through yeah, this earlier, I mean, and there's, there's just like I'm so far behind on this stuff. I mean, it's just like a wall, massive wall of text. The last thirty the, days on this stuff. The really good thing is like you you see, and this is just one issue, by the way. There's I know. like well, you see, um, there's a bunch of Reddit threads in here. What you'll notice, <laughs> you can read this for yourself. What you'll notice is that. People like Jeff Garzik are completely magnanimous about everything. They do not stoop to calling people idiots or I, wanna, or I have a tremendous amount of respect for Garzik. Yeah, can, I, can, I just make the, can I just make a confused emoji to say I contributed to Segwit 2X with that? There. Yeah. There. I'm, I'm part of the I'm part of the experience now. Here. This guy said something. Uh, you'll notice who um, you're you'll an notice official it. contributor. Yeah. You'll, you'll see some of these people who <laughs> Jeff are Garzik. Not, you know what, right? Jeff Garzik? I don't really agree with this one. But but, Gavin, uh, Gavin's talking right there. You know, Gavin gets a heart and a disapproval. What? How yeah, dare you, dude? I, I it, it canceled out. <laughs> dude, <laughs> like to me, I'm like to me. I don't like, think you've forgiven him yeah. for the whole Craig Wright thing. It's oh like, me! I, you're I still never, holding the grudge. This, never, this whole this whole thing is kind of bizarre. Just seeing emojis in in no, it's just funny comments. because like, I never <laughs> use these. Like we barely use these emojis with um with 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 my work, right? Or any of my jobs that have to use GitHub. They, it's they just need, funny. Like you know what they need? They need the poop emoji. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they need to implement the poop emoji in in, in GitHub comments. Yeah. All right. Anyways, I just think it's funny. This is so, entertainment right here. It really is. Like that's. I mean, I can't take it serious when I see. Okay, how do you know you're a nerd? <laughs> you get excited when you see uh, Reddit issues or sorry, the GitHub issues. That uh, when I when okay, I participate yeah. in these conversations, I feel like I'm part of history. That's true. I mean, it's on true. It's on public record too. Yeah, and it GitHub might go is down. forever. Well, I mean, these these maybe, GitHub is using the GitHub these, blockchain. I mean, I don't want to say they're like like the. I mean, <laughs> get hat shall one. These yeah. these could be the federal papers of the next the founding generation. I, I just hope they include my emojis. I include right there, so they will. No. Yeah, it's you're part of the record now. I mean, I mean, think about Bitcoin Airlog is going to be on every single project. Yeah, but I mean, that's the thing though. They're open. They'll know exactly what he contributed to every <laughs> single project. <laughs> I think the He's history. Really into the um, of <laughs> I don't think history will judge uh, people like Greg and. Um, other people who are not always as professional as they would like to be, I think they'll look back and go, oh, man, I was an idiot back then. <laughs> because they, they do not conduct themselves 
Uh, Greg be, Maxwell? Yeah, I mean, they, they... I think he conducts himself a lot better than some people. That's true. Uh, there I mean, are I mean it's, it's worse, all relative. But, but when you're call, openly calling people dipshits and whatnot, like in public, I don't think that's very handy. Who Who did that? Greg Maxwell. Oh, yeah, to no. who? Adam Back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when you see, call, I'm, well, I'm, he, that's a famous quote. <laughs> okay, uh, not, you know what it was I'm about? Not. No, no, no. <laughs> this was about the Hong Kong agreement, and and, and they said, well, you know, because because this is a the, kind of important story. So so this <laughs> was the original story, the original Hong Kong agreement, right? Uh, uh, they sent you know I Adam take back everything I said about <laughs> Adam Back. Adam Back went to and he signed. He signed the and it was essentially what the agreement we have now as the New York agreement is. It's very ironic. The isn't exact it? same agreement we had a year and a half ago as the Hong Kong agreement, right? And and so so Adam Back signed all you know a bunch of the miners signed, not all of them. Uh, and Adam Back signed and and he initially signed it as Adam Back President Blockstream because he wasn't the CEO back then; he was the president, right? So he signed it as Adam Back President Blockstream. And then, you know, he crossed it out, you know, and went back because like after he had signed it as that, and he then signed it as Adam Back individual. So 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 remember, think about the difference between this. There's Adam Back, well respected cryptographer, cypherpunk, whatever, right? As just a person. And then there's Adam Back, who is, you know, a one of the executive leadership team of somebody who employs half of the developers, right? So so the boss of of blockstream right right so you know so so sorry adam back a dude or adam back greg maxwell's boss that's the difference there right so he signed initially as adam back greg maxwell's boss and then he you know crossed that out and then he re-signed as adam back individual right so so obviously the miners were pissed about this Right. Right. Because it was like a total betrayal. of We thought we were dealing and we thought it was the developers and the miners coming to an agreement. But no, it wasn't the core team that signed anything. It was Adam back individual. So first of all, there's a difference between Blockstream and the core team because Blockstream is a subset of the core team. Why did so Adam core, back decide to do that? Probably because they contacted him and said, you don't speak you, for you us. You don't speak for us. Yeah. Okay. So, so I mean. And then the miners block, block, were like, who are you speaking for? Well, yeah, exactly. Right. Because, well, and that's that's the thing is, you know, at that point, a lot of people said, well, it's null and void because he reneged on the original thing when he changed his freaking signature because they were operating under the impression they were making a deal with the miners. Exactly. And, and they did not. And then, the, you know, Greg Maxwell completely ignored it. And, you know, and this was a Reddit thread that he said this in, but he said, just because a couple of well-meaning dipshits go to Hong Kong and then they make a deal doesn't mean we have to abide by it or, or doesn't mean that it's so right. Didn't, so or, didn't call him by name, but alluded to Adam he, Back. Yeah, no, he and definitely someone else. not not by name, but, it but he like, called Adam Back a well-meaning dipshit. But, but uh, <laughs> it, he said dipshits. Yeah, dipshits. So who else? I forget who else was there, okay. but it was it was a lot oh, of different people. Is, um, it was like let me a round think, table. Event. Who was it? Um, oh, Gavin went there. Right? Yeah, Gavin was there too. So you, he, you can look he it collectively up. called Adam Back and Gavin Andreessen a dipshit. You can it's look like, it up. But I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like, like why would you ever do that? That's like it's so insulting to these people, right? So so I'd like to I'd like to ask another thing here. Um, I know we're getting a little late. Yeah, we'll wrap it up soon. I mean, we're running out of stuff to talk about. So yeah, it's true. But but before, <laughs> uh, so so uh, one of the common criticisms you hear a lot from the other side is that this was done behind closed doors and core the core developers completely cut out of the process you hear that a lot from eric yep. Brozo. yep so so what what as somebody who's active on the segwit 2x project what's your stance on this what do you have to say okay so behind closed doors 100 percent. i don't think there's any way around people making agreements you you kind of have to do it without um you know what are you going to do like just say all right everybody who wants to basically the whole world let's get together and sort this out it's not possible right so i'm not defending that they got together and did this apparently behind closed doors because it kind of kind of reeks of that and i i don't like that either so i won't defend it but that's 100 percent true um but the other issue is that no core developer signed off on this yeah that's the point because what people need to understand very clearly is and i'm saying this again and again to people is that the miners want the core devs gone and that there's a reason they don't want the core devs ever to participate in bitcoin development ever again that means eric the person you just mentioned you know peter todd 
Peter Willa, all those people, they don't, these miners do not, they want to fire. Peter Todd's considered a core dev? Well, uh, yeah. Well, he's part of the crowd. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 so, I, I, I um, didn't, I didn't they think. have, they're very homogenous in their, their, their views. I would say so that. they want to fire these people. They don't want them participating in Bitcoin, Bitcoin development Bix, anymore. Bitcoin? So, hold on. Or either that or, so or that Luke, too. Luke Dash so. Jr. Luke Dash Jr. Is a, he's a core developer, but he's not an employee of Blockstream, but he's a contractor for Blockstream. <laughs> so, I mean, they're, they're all of the same mindset when it comes to certain key issues. So my point was, if they were, if they did sign off on it, the miners would be like, wait, hold on. Okay, why are these people agreeing? We don't want to agree with them because we want them gone. <laughs> so they would they would question their own uh, agreement if people uh, like Eric and uh, you know Sipa and all those people signed off on it. They would be like, okay, that's not the point of what we want. We want we just want these people gone. We don't even so, care about their technology or anything. We just you know the ASIC boost thing is so overblown. So let's let's just address that really quickly because I know we I know we talked about it a little bit last time, but somebody raised an interesting point because you said because it's it's as effective as SegWit as ridding ASIC boost, but somebody pointed out that I read that you could still use ASIC boost even with SegWit if you created a block without any SegWit transactions. Is that true? Um well, if you uh, created a block and you had no segue okay, or say no I'm, transactions, the reason I'm hesitating is because I'm trying to remember if you have to include the commitment, uh, the witness commitment, even if it if there's no uh, segue transactions in that block. I'm I'm saying I think you're right. I don't think you have to put the uh, the 36 byte uh, commitment in there if you don't have any transactions that are segue. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, that's, so but, but I mean, it becomes be... very easy to spot those transactions and call them out for what they are. I mean, right. <laughs> but right. yeah, you mean like just a really small. Well, if you see segwit if you, transaction, if you see a bunch of segwit transactions paying fees, even with the discount, and you see you know other ones, and they're prioritizing the non segwit transaction, they fill it up entirely with those and don't touch the segwit transactions. Ah, then right. you're like, well, and, <laughs> you know. And yeah. Yeah. And remember, you're going to have uh, a bias toward non-segwit transactions anyway, because non-segwit transactions will not be subsidized, but segwit transactions will be subsidized, which means that the miners are not going to get. Uh, they're they're going to you're going to have that's you're true. Gonna have a. You're pretty much eventually going to be economically forced to do segwit transactions. So there'll be more people doing no. them, but miners no. miners are going to prefer non-segwit. Yeah, because they're going to make more money because off those. Because they're making more money. Yeah, but the what I'm saying fees. is it's going to be cheaper to do a... So customers, in theory, should prefer the subsidized transactions. That's yeah. why the subsidy is yeah. there. And if enough people do it, then uh, there won't be any normal transactions. Yeah. But if you want your transaction expedited, then... So how much debate went on... Do you on... just pay more of a SegWit fee, or do you just do a normal transaction or you a just pay combination? More, you pay more fee. How either, much... either way, you pay more fee. How much debate went on about uh, changing the subsidy? There was a lot of debate because people wanted the subsidy to apply to both non-segwit transactions and segwit transactions for whatever reason. I'm like, I, I was well, like, just I, get I rid kind of the I'm subsidy, kind of, right? I'm kind of in the. I'm kind of in the. How would you make the subsidy for non-segwit transactions? You would. Well, the fact that after the hard fork, you now have expanded capacity, so you should treat both equally because you don't want to have. You don't want to um, have. Uh, you don't want to uh, uh, discriminate between these things right because that's the thing you know you have you have no i get that but what would you do i i, I get the point but wh how would you do it you would um essentially apply block weight to okay these other things right mm -hmm. and so you would have these other transactions which have signatures in them and everything and so, i don't know so, es a, so essentially your 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 bytes per satoshi would also include the signature data and the and it wouldn't apply to that so when you're well, right looking, now it doesn't apply that. But uh, if you're going to subsidize the stuff on chain, then you have to like evil uh, level a playing field, right? Yeah, that that was the theory is that you want to level the playing field between uh, subsidized transactions and non, non subsidized transactions. But that's not going to be the way it is. You're gonna it, the way it's going to end up is you're going to only subsidize the segwit transactions because those are the ones that are doing the work to get rid of the signatures and actually have an effect on... It's trying, more, trying to spur adoption of, of the yeah, actual there's not, segment. I, I, I can't think of a really good way to 
do that with you know, like what you're saying. Yeah, and yeah. It, all you know, it's it was a complex was, uh, issue. But at the end of the day, you decided to leave it alone. Well, let me just ask: Was it due to you actually believed in the goal it was trying to yeah. accomplish? Yeah. Okay. As opposed to the other thing would be you just didn't want to change it because that's more complexity and more contention. Exactly. And, yeah. Like anytime you you increase the patch, it's less understandable and and more risk to the miners. Because this is a minimalistic patch. Right. It's supposed to be segwit literally as written plus you know, right yeah. as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. Well, I cool. mean, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent. I mean, I I'm, I would prefer segwit to be a trans to be a hard fork. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. We can talk about Segwit later if you want. We can go through the patch. I mean, the patch would take. I think that like would be an, an through. excellent thing to do. Oh, for not, the next, not next for us. show. Well, no, we'll take an hour. <laughs> I mean, there's. Uh, I think there's only like ten files or something that it touches. You know, version bits and validation CPP. And well, we might have a lot of questions and, outside of that too, because oh, we, we don't. Way, Mike um, and I don't really look at the code too often. So, by we're, the way, the one thing that I ADD did as well, the most work on is. Uh, for those of you that know anything about the fact that there's a test net associated with Bitcoin, um, with the hard fork and with SegWit 2x, there that the traditional test net that we have now is going away. Um, we're we're re we've rebooted it and it's called Testnet 5. So we have Testnet 3, which if you're familiar with Testnet, that's the traditional test net. We have uh, testnet 4, which is the SegWit uh, testnet, and now we have testnet 5, which become the de facto default testnet going forward. So, so, say, so testnet 5, anybody who's developing Bitcoin applications, assuming, of course, SegWit 2x activates, that's the one you want to be using. And blockchain.info has a block explorer on it. And you guys were like one of the first people to ever use it. Yeah, <laughs> we so, were pointed at it. And you guys have like thousands of coins that I gave you. Uh, no, I give them back. Oh, that's right. You I sent them, them all back. And you never gave I, me I, any. I, dude, I'm testnet broke. I sent coins to you. I'll dude, send you more. I, I, oh, you did? I was so uh, testnet rich, dude. I, I haven't checked. Dude, I had 200,000 bitcoins on testnet. Are you serious? Yeah. It was awesome. I looked at my balance. I was like, that, uh, That's only slightly less than you have now. This, yeah. Well, actually. It's sad. So <laughs> it's 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 growing. People are setting up test faucets for testnet 5, and it's all it's amazing that, you know, I set it up. I mined the first coins and everything. So, you know, it's kind of awesome. weird. It's kind of weird. It's like that's why I say I feel honored to be part of all this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's this is this is serious. This is the first Bitcoin hard fork. Right? If I, I first off, I'm still c very cautiously optimistic. Okay. No, no offense. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. No yeah, offense. Okay. I am very cautiously optimistic you, about what adoption about this working in general just like everything how? you think Every, just, uh, there's so many things i feel think like there are you beat usurpers that come in and just steal it away from us Dude, there's i just feel like for me it's like bitcoin has just been a, a just time after time just disappointment so many disappointments uh, and i just yeah. feel like it's it's almost like i'm hardened to just never believe in you're just like it's not gonna work. Yeah, I, I'm just like so like skeptical. Okay, but so, I'm so hold on, hold on. But I'm just cautious. All right, know. at what point will you celebrate? Lightning Network working and being being like I I'm doing payments through Lightning and you mean, payment yeah, but are I mean, okay, so 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 you're not gonna celebrate anything even if Segwit is active and the hard fork happens. I'm not gonna be happy until I can use until I can do micro transactions securely. Okay, that's that's well, that's, that's, that's that's my yeah. uh, it, to me right now because uh, when you get that off chain micro transaction payment, I, I feel like it opens up a lot of oh, it does. use cases. It, it, no, and, it definitely does. It does. And, and to me, that's what I'm excited about. So cool. Yeah. All right. I think yeah. Anyways, does it. So, I, Mike, I think the knots has been found. Yeah, and our blocks have been doubled. Uh, I don't have a saying. Dude, we don't, thanks for we, propagating with thanks us. Thanks for propagating. Uh, is that where we, yeah. we need well, to practice that? Yeah. You want to do it again? No. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.